Good evening. I'm Todd with Weekly Gaming News Show. Today is March 19th, 2017, episode 40. And I'm here, as always, with my, my good friend, <laughs> Trinell. What's going on, everybody? We are hey. back, episode 40. How does it feel, man? 40 episodes do every week. 40 weeks. Yeah, like that, that 40 seems, weeks, man. That's been, that's been a long time, though. We've been, we've been rocking and rolling. And uh, it, it feels good to be back. We are um, hosting this live on Facebook and Twitch. So shout out to everybody that's uh, tuning in to uh, Twitch. You know, we're um, glad to be back. And um, for everybody that, you know, follows us on Facebook as well, thank you all for tuning in. We really, really appreciate you. Um, before Always. we get started, though, um, I just want to know, how's, how's your weekend been going? Let's let's chat. How's, how's everything been going? <laughs> my weekend? Yeah, how's Man, everything? I, I got a one-year-old, so oh, okay. my weekend has been my one-year-old. I folded some clothes. <laughs> I chased her around the house a little bit. <laughs> Did some chores around the yeah. house. She bit me a couple of times, you know. Oh man! Oh, with the she, fingernails all sharp and shit. No, she got no. She's got eight teeth, and she oh. likes to chow down. Oh man! I don't. I don't know what she just randomly would just straight up bite me. It's oh awesome. man, that's that <laughs> sounds, sounds sounds pleasant. Yeah, um, that's that's been my weekend. Uh, my Pretty weekend. Much. Um, I went to I went to the movies again, and oh, I'm not gonna nice. nerd out for too long because uh, I saw Get Out. Have you seen that movie yet? No, I don't I, get this. You don't get I'm, to see movies no more. I, I, I actually, let me take that back. I buy all my movies. Okay, okay. Video and I, I'll buy them. Sometimes I red box them if it's bad or, you know, I know some places. Right. If I don't think the movie's worth my money. Okay, I agree. <laughs> uh, I can I can see that, you know. Um, But I'm not going to spoil anything, but it was directed, written by uh, Jordan Peele from, from Key and Peele. You know, really? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the director in it, and it's a horror, like... Uh, yeah, not, it's like com- comedy horror, right? I wouldn't say comedy. It's it's like a suspense, like thriller type joint. Mm. And I don't want to spoil anything, but I definitely recommend it. It was a it was a good movie, and um, yeah, it, it's 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 dope. It's dope. Yeah, I'm gonna I, have I to recommend. It. It's something I really want to check out. I've heard a lot of things about it. Yeah. Um, I you know I just don't I I don't get a chance sometimes like. So for me, it's either sneak out and go to a movie <laughs> or play a game. Hey, so, babe, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna go grocery shopping. And be at the movies. No, no, I wait for her to go to sleep too. Everybody's got to be asleep. Oh, you wait till they go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, and I just sneak out, catch those eleven o'clock. So. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> All right, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into the show uh, with our first uh, segment. Uh, what we got? Um, first, I have an update. Last week, and I kind of corrected a little bit last week, but I want to make a formal correction. Mm-hmm. Um, I announced that Mass Effect and Drama is due out on March 28th, ah, when, it's, yeah. when it's actually due out on the 21st. So we got two more days. Two and, more days. And, yeah, we got Mass Effect, some new Mass Effect. New Mass Effect. Oh, my goodness. And, and speaking of Mass Effect... Like that, I mean, let's just roll into it. Our, our weekly icebreaker, yeah. and we're just we're just gonna talk about Mass Effect for a while because, like, with it coming out in in freaking no time, I kind of right. just want to like get a sense of what is some of your your most memorable moments from the original tr- uh, Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, I'll let you go first. Well, my most memorable moment is um, and I actually had to do a second or third playthrough. I think it was my third playthrough when I got this to happen. But uh, when Tali committed suicide, when she just yeah. straight up jumped off the cliff, um, yeah. It, if you haven't played this in Mass Effect Three, um, it, it comes to a point where Tali's um, f- her her last was what were they called the fleet, the mm-hmm. armada or whatever yeah. they were called. I forgot what they were yeah, called. Yeah, it was the exactly. fleet. Yeah. Um, they they uh, went into battle and just start got decimated. Yeah, they were fighting the Reapers and and she's like oh, I can't believe it and she took the leap of faith. It was it was actually pretty awful because Tali was one of my favorite characters, and I actually I didn't see it coming. I was like, no, wait, yeah, what? she 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 be, she kind of came into um came into her like her own like you know self um, throughout the franchise. You know, becoming like going from this like kind of like quiet like didn't really like see herself as you know much of a uh of a like an influence on on the overarching story or whatever uh to this major character that, and you know I fell in love with her like after her first appearance I was just like yo she she is dope she she's like one of the dopest characters in, in right. the game she she was always she was she was one of the must haves in your in your fire team yeah pretty definitely. much all the time oh yeah yeah her her freaking special abilities were dope yeah um, definitely 
For, let, what's yours? Let me hear you. What, well, what you for got? for me, it's it's probably uh, unanimous that the one of, if not the most memorable part of Mass Effect was the ending to Mass Effect Three. And you know, we've talked about this on the podcast <laughs> many a times, and how it just didn't come together like everybody thought it it would. You know, the right. the whole the whole thing with Mass Effect as a series was that all of your decisions was going to mean something in the end, and right. In the end, it didn't mean a goddamn thing. Very ex- ex- little. Yeah, especially um, before they went back and revamped the ending. Because yeah. if you remember, um, at launch, the the ending basically came down to like, "Yo, what's your favorite color?" Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it just it kind of came back, yeah. came down to that. Uh, with the I, I forget I forget what the character's name was. He was like a, like the god child or like something um, like that. It was like this little kid. And he, yeah. he gave you three choices and you know that's just how the game that's and how, it was. how everybody in that world um was going to just live out the rest of existence right. and it was, you know it was either either what go to a new planet kill yourself or kill every I forget what it was it was like kill synthetics um kill. become like one with the synthetics right or something else I can I can't remember but it, it was all like color coded, so everybody was just like, "Yo, red, green, or blue." Like that was that was <laughs> that was that was pretty much it. That was their take on Matrix, right? Yeah, pr- yeah, pretty color. much. Yeah, so didn't didn't come out too much. They tried to rectify it with the um, update um, post launch. I I actually didn't even play the game a second time. I was like, "Yo, I I don't know how I feel about this." You know, I I didn't I never revisited it. Yeah, I I did play it a second time. I actually I think I played through Mass Effect three three times the first because the 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 last time i wanted to play through is because apparently people were getting everybody killed and i mm. still couldn't get that to happen like yo the i didn't stop. the only people that i lost mm-hmm. were people that i honestly didn't really care about right like i think there was a uh a character that was new to the series some like big like brolic like old white dude i can't remember his name oh yeah i remember that guy like the he was like the sniper yeah, and I believe yeah. he was a DLC character. Or like, you got him as a reward from DLC or something. And, like, when he kind of, like, decided he was going to sacrifice himself, I was like, all right, good looking. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, you're good. Like, he's like, I'll, I'll hold him off. Good my, on my you, my boy. My playthrough, I didn't lose anybody. <laughs> I, I lost him, and I think I lost um I lost Jack. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah she, she was Jack. cool. She that was, cool. She was one of my favorite. That was that was my love interest. I, I was it was Miranda on one playthrough, but Jack. I, I think I, I think I got down with her like two times. Yo, I got down with both of the bitches. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got down with Jack on Jack, the sneak tip, son. Yeah, Jack was my girl. Yeah, Jack. No, Jack was cool, and I really liked her in three. But um, yeah, I, I lost her, and I lost that one guy, and um, that that was it. Yeah, I but, didn't lose. Yeah, I didn't lose anybody except for the, the Tali on my second playthrough, mm. and that was because I did exactly opposite of what I did the first time. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it was super unexpected. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never lost Tali. I was like, "Yo," because yeah. when you told me that, I was like, "Yeah, that's a thing. I've seen it, but I definitely never didn't experience that um, during a during a playthrough." But yeah, Mass Effect. So Mass Effect. Su- super excited for oh, yeah. the upcoming release. Um, if you're watching this on Twitch, I'm definitely going to be playing that game. So you'll make sure you follow if you want to see it. That's just going to be fun. That's just going to be so much fun. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Uh, but with that said, um, I guess we can go ahead and get into our top five stories of the week. But before we do that, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors over at the Street Fighter New Challenger Discord. Um, if you're new at Street Fighter and you want to get good, Street Fighter 5 that is we, we don't play Street Fighter 4 no more uh, but if you're trying to get good the uh, new challenger discord is the place for you uh, it's a vast community run by Mr. Vinegar uh, you can find him on Twitter at Mr. Vinegar uh, he's the owner of the discord and it's a huge community they're super active um, you know and everything it comes uh, with a lot of coaching uh, bi-weekly tournaments for you know beginner and intermediate players and monthly turn uh, tournaments for players in a certain uh, range um, according to your um, your fighter points I forget what the hell the damn rank is called but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, go ahead and join if you're new to the series you know you want to become a part of a uh, street fighter become a part of the legacy go ahead and join up if you're new um, if you're willing to learn or if you just want to challenge yourself this is the perfect 
place for you to go. So um, if you want more information, you can go to www.newchallenger.gg. You can visit them on Twitter at SF um, New Challenger and on um, their twitch.tv SF New Challenger to watch bi-weekly and monthly tournaments. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get into our first story. And it has to do with Street Fighter. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our resident uh, Street Fighter expert via satellite. Not really, but uh, via, <laughs> via Discord, we're going to bring in our um, resident uh, Street Fighter um, expert to talk about the Street Fighter V balance update that came out or is coming out uh, very soon because the patch notes went live and uh, everything is uh, available for you to consume. But uh, we're going to give you guys a basic breakdown. And for that, we have Mount Lover here. Mount Lover, are you there? Uh, hello? 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 <laughs> hello? Hello? Hey, what's guys? up, everybody? I'm Mount Lover. Welcome. Good. It's, good. it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Mount Lover has been on the podcast uh, in the past um, for Street Fighter-related purposes. So we're just going to let him... Um, we're just going to let you go ahead and uh, explain uh, to us um your take on some of the changes so you know with you know just right, do well, your thing first off let me just go ahead and uh and and explain how how this uh this balance patch is why it's important and why it's interesting because um when the when Street Fighter 5 released there was no they they announced uh, Capcom announced that they were not going to put out any uh balance changes until the Capcom Pro Tour League had ended for that season and that was such a huge deal because um like normally you it, you want to patch things that that are apparently like underpowered overpowered you know as quickly as possible and as frequently as possible to make sure that your game ends up as balanced as possible but they right. didn't want to change the meta of the game as it was developing and as the league was going on and so what they decided is all right you know what we're gonna we're gonna take a good long hard look at the game and then once season two happens we'll uh we'll, we'll make that that change in the in the downtime before the season starts and then uh, and then there'll be no more changes except a lot <laughs> of people are saying the game is a lot worse now after the changes that they made between season too and i agree with them they they made a lot of really really i mean they made a lot of questionable changes yeah. and they were aiming to make more characters good than making than aiming to make good characters bad like it, they were trying to make it so that everybody was usable and instead they ended up making a lot of characters way too good yeah and so they're coming out with this what we're calling the 2.1 balance update which is it, we've already had one major tournament that's already been <laughs> already been decided and now the meta is going to change a little bit yeah final uh, fight 20 yeah we patch. covered that last week Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. final round already happened and, and oh, so like round, now yeah. they're, they're they're it's still not live yet but they've announced the changes and so first off there are a few big universal changes that are happening and the one that everybody's talking about is uh the removal of the jump back option select for those of you who don't know what that is it was a it was a pretty powerful but not unbeatable option that you could use to escape pressure and what it was was you basically you hold down back when you're waking up or or when you're recovering from a move and then you time it so that you press up, back, and throw on like the, the second or third frame while you're getting up. And when you do that, you'll block from that first couple of frames when you're holding down back. You'll block any kind of media attack that's coming your way for somebody trying to pressure you on wake up. And then when you press up, back, and throw, you'll take any throw that might come your way. And then you'll avoid throws and grabs uh, by jumping away. In the in the case of a, a throw or a command grab, like and it was just it beat so many things and it it allowed you to turn off your brain when when you were uh, getting pressured mm -hmm. and so Capcom didn't like that. I don't necessarily think that it was overpowered, but I, I think that uh, it was against the spirit of the game and and it was against the spirit of you know taking your your punishment whenever you put yourself in a bad situation. So Capcom took that out, and so that's not going to affect a majority of people that just didn't use it because they didn't like it or they didn't. They thought it was a crutch, mm -hmm. but it is going to affect people that uh, that depended a little bit too uh, too much on it. A lot of West Coast players tended to to do that a lot, and uh, it's going to hurt them. And it's going to help players that uh, that rely on that fundamental like throw meaty mix up. And so it's going to help a lot of players like Cami. It's going to help command grapplers, um, and and just people that uh, that have a lot of momentum. And then there are the uh, character specific changes, and these are these are the interesting ones. Um, so first off, everybody with the Shoryuken, they made some Shoryuken changes. Oh, of, yeah. Like, they, they, it, it's interesting. Like, so people are like, oh, yeah, Invincible, meet of the Shoryukens are back, right? No, they're not Yeah, back. no, not really. <laughs> it's specialized Shoryukens is what they're doing. And so Light Shoryuken is now your universal go-to option if you want to beat throws. It, uh, Light Shoryukens always beat throws. If you wake up with the Light Shoryuken, it'll beat a command grab or a grab, no matter what the timing there is. Um, 
And then Heavy Shore, you can mostly it's going to retain its properties that it had before. It's going to have full invincibility from frames three to six. And so that's you're like, it's 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 still not very useful. Like it's not very it's useful, just, but it does say here in the patch notes that um they'll be invincible to projectiles. It's yeah. It, if you if you're heavy sure you can didn't have projectile invulnerability or uh, from frames three to six, then they'll have that now. But right. most people already had that actually. Okay, uh, I didn't know they already had that three to six full invincibility. I don't know why they describe it as attack and projectile. It's full invincibility for frames three to six. Mm -hmm. But it's just those first couple of frames that, you, that are the important ones when you're waking up. Right. And so that makes it a little bit still not super useful. The useful one now is medium, mm -hmm. and the deal with medium is that's now your anti air. Uh, 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 Sure, you can, and they made it. I didn't even know this was a mechanic. They probably implemented it just for this, but it has got full airborne invincibility from frame one. And so, if whatever wow. you're trying to hit is from the skies, it'll be invincible. <laughs> the the sure you can will beat that. And so that's that's a really interesting change. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to, because they took away the full invincibility, they wanted to, to put that back for anti airs, but they didn't want you to be able to wake up for free with that invincibility without spending any meter. Right. And so that was a cool little compromise, and it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And whether that affects stuff like uh, like Akuma's uh, air fireballs, because that kind of a projectile is that airborne? It is airborne. It is airborne. Kind of one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that is, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the thing is one of the things is that you know when they changed the uh, medium Sharukins from being invincible on frame one, a lot of people just couldn't use those as uh, anti airs anymore. You know because you know it would either it would trade, so it was just like mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't uh, a good attack to use yeah it only had that that three to six invincibility that the heavies have now yeah and like it was just it was not good it was a risk to try and anti-air stuff with it sometimes because especially those akuma fireballs those three frames of invincibility weren't enough to pass creep through them right and so yeah that that's that's going to help a lot in the anti-air department and it's going to help a lot versus akuma specifically if it if it does affect apply to that that air fireball and so that's going to give a lot of people a lot of extra options and uh and i can behind that yeah. and then for the character specific changes i'm just going to go down this in, uh, in alphabetical order, particular Dude, order just just pick out a couple because we could be here all day talking about, <laughs> about characters let's just go through a couple honestly uh, it, no it wasn't every character that got changed it's okay. only a handful that are worth okay yeah so i mean gonna, yeah I'm gonna, just... I'm gonna go through the ones that are worth talking about here okay cool so first one alex a lot of people considered him to be the worst in the game after the nerfs that he got after uh season one and uh so these changes that he's got he's going to have a gameplay before he, they, I was I was just talking in the tournament that I that I just commentated that uh, mm -hmm. it was I don't see why you would currently pick Alex and like there's he, there's nothing that he can do better than everybody else, uh, and so they've given him a few interesting things. The first off, they've made a few of his buttons a little bit uh, faster. They've reduced the startup, and that's one of those things that like it's it's clearly a buff, but nobody can know how much of a buff until they get their hands on the character and see what's now possible and what's not. So that's right. more technical. Um, the the one thing is his uh, his elbow. His slash elbow. A lot of the a lot of uh, Alex players would use that to to get in, but right. the problem is that on block it's always minus, right? It was always minus four if you spaced it correctly to be safe, but you'd always end your turn if it was blocked, and so that's just there's nothing to, to be afraid of there. You just hold back, and there's you know, there's nothing to worry about. However, they've made it safer on block. They've made it minus two, and that means it'll never be punishable. You don't ever have to worry about spacing it correctly anymore. Additionally, if you do space it correctly you can now potentially, because it's active enough, get it to the point at which it's plus on, plus on block. Which means that you, uh, as the defending player, if you just hold back brainlessly against Alex and you just think, oh, there's nothing he can, I gotta, I gotta worry about. He's that far away, right. I can just block. If you, if he gets that spacing perfectly right and t and spaces that elbow perfectly, he can continue his turn potentially. And he can get, you can end up getting counter hit if you try to challenge it. And so that's a cool little thing that we'll see how it, it's it's cool on paper, but we'll see how practical that is once uh once the changes go through. Um, who else? Then we've got a character that a lot of people complained about, um, Urian. So the changes Ooh. to Urian are very important because Urian is the most complained about character in the game right now. Uh, yeah. And it's easy to see why. That man has a huge long range normals. He's got a forward medium punch that reaches almost halfway across the screen. And wow. then it can frame trap into an overhead, which can be V trigger canceled into 40% of your health, which is <laughs> <Yeah>. nuts. <laughs> and so his forward PR medium here. punch, like it, uh, it advances forward, right? On, and so like when you block it, you technically have the advantage, but you, when, if you press buttons, you're just banking that he's not going to frame trap into that overhead. 
because if you do press buttons and that overhead does come out, you get counter hit and then you can lose 40% of your health. But if you don't press a button, he can bully you with it. He can just keep pressing that forward medium punch. Because of the fact that it advances forward, even if you're holding back, you can't back up fast enough to get out of it. And it's nuts. And so, uh, and I, I mean, that's that's not getting changed. That's just one of the things that, uh, that people complained about. What what uh, people what's getting changed is the fact that he uh, he had this option after that forward medium punch of uh, going for a crouching medium kick, which is plus two on block. And like this might not sound like much, but so a lot of Street Fighter Five is the high low mix up. Right. And so, like I just said, that he can frame trap into that overhead, which means that you want to keep an eye out for that. You want to block high. But what he can also do is he can go low. So he can go for a crouching light kick or a crouching medium kick. And just for that to be plus on block, that means that you can continue with your pressure even if your opponent guesses correctly and blocks low there. And so it's like you mix up your opponent and then you can go at just keep on continuing that pressure because of the fact that you're plus two. And it's just like it was so hard to get out of Yurian's face. It was just it, – it seemed like it was over once he got in. And so they're removing that. Um – and then additionally for some other characters... Oh, yeah, and then uh, another thing that Urian had that was overpowered was uh, his uh, his EX tackle, his yeah, EX chariot tackle. Now, uh, there's a lot of memes out there where, where there'll be, like, a picture of, like, Usain Bolt, like, running, like, you know, like, winning, like, oh, the, yeah. uh, uh, the, the Olympics. Yeah. And then you'll see, like, Balrog doing EX dash punch in front of him. <laughs> and then you'll see, like, Urian doing his EX chariot tackle in front of Balrog. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> I, I wish I had that picture so I could just, like, display it here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> And that it's just it's because that move is ridiculously fast. You can't react to it. If you're holding forward and he does EX chariot attack, you're done. You're on the ground. Um, and so like it was one of those moves that you always had to be afraid of. And you don't you didn't even get rewarded for blocking it because of the fact that it was it was not minus on block, it was new it was zero on block, which means that uh, worst case scenario, if you block it, Yurian can just like he can continue his pressure against like the slower characters and against the faster characters. He doesn't have to worry about too much afterwards. He can just back off and reset the situation. You don't get rewarded for blocking that move that's impossible to react to. And so they changed that and they made it minus two. So he, at least you know for a fact now once the changes go through, if you block that, it's it's your turn. You can you can start up putting on the offense, whereas that wasn't always the case. And then uh, and then uh, Vega. Got oh, some wow. huge buffs. Oh man, Vega got the most significant changes out of everybody on the list. Uh, and I, I dare to say that these are these changes are, are like significant, even comparing the season one to season two changes. These are huge. Oh, wow. um, he got he got a lot of changes to his clawed form. So what if, uh, uh, one of the things that Vega can do is he can take his claw on and off, and his playstyle changes entirely, regard uh, depending on whether his claw is currently on his hand. And he can do that intentionally, or you can knock his claw off of his hand. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the higher level Vegas would intentionally take it off because of the fact that his frame data was so much better when he was not wearing the claw. And so it was just, it was not viable to try to play the ranged game with that claw. And so what they did was they gave him more options and they gave him a lot of normals that are plus on block when he's wearing the claw. And so now his, his, uh, his crouching heavy punch plus three on block. He went from minus five, which, which means punishable. It, 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 that's, that's punishable by anybody in the cast if you're close enough. Minus five to plus three. That's such a ridiculous change. That means it went from a normal that you should almost never use to a normal that you can spam. <laughs> like, Damn. you just keep using it. That's the correct thing to do. Uh, and, and then his, uh, his flying Barcelona attack, a, a move that people already complained about for being too good and too hard to anti-air. Now, uh, it used to be that he was plus on block if he used it without the claw on. Now it's also plus three on block if he's wearing the claw. Oh, wow. And so that, that's just, that's ridiculous. That means that uh, Clawed Vega is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And you, it means in that addition you, to Unclawed Vega. <laughs> yeah, in addition to Unclawed Vega. Wow. And so nobody knows exactly what the repercussions of this is. And, and it, it, we just know that this is going to make him way better with the claw on now. And it's, that's, that's going to be cool to see. Because a lot of matchups, he needed the claw for the extra range. Because he couldn't right. afford to get close in, uh, close up, and uh, this is going to alleviate that for Vega. So I, I, we're probably going to see a lot more Vega once show these, up in these changes in tournaments. Yeah, wow. yeah. And then uh, another kind of big change is that uh, Zangief got some new moves. So new moves. it's a little bit weird. <laughs> Did they give him his green got. fist? No. Okay. They good. gave him the motion <laughs> for the green fist, for like a DP with punch, uh -huh. but it doesn't do his green hand anymore. What it is is it's a counter, and it only counters, and this is the most vaguely I've ever heard anything explained for a fighting game ever. 
it's a counter to horizontally angled kick attacks and i'm just like what what what, what, what is that like, it? that's like not a fighting game term like, you know, <laughs> that's that's what the kind of thing people would say when they're learning the the, the game like oh you, i keep getting hit by these horizontal kick attacks like okay but wouldn't that be like just like standard front kicks right Standard Not front, standard it, back kick. It, de it depends on the character. That's super character specific. Th yeah, the thing is, like, there's no mechanics in the game to distinguish uh, a kick from a punch. And right, there's no it's, mechanics it's, in the it's game. Or not hit. Yeah, like, there's no <laughs> mechanics in the game to determine whether something's horizontally angled or not. And so it's like, what if someone has an axe kick? Like, does that count as a horizontally well, angled no, kick? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at the finishing animation, right? So if the animation finish and the leg is horizontal to the ground, that would be the horizontal kick see that makes sense like when you're explaining it in english but the thing is like <laughs> when you're looking at people's move sets there's nothing to indicate whether right. something would would hit that classification or not yeah so like, they're, got, they're probably you've just got gonna got karen's standing medium kick and her standing heavy kick her standing medium kick is called her straight kick yeah she's right just, that's horizontally angled that's that's a 90 degree angle her standing heavy kick is a roundhouse and she kicks you in your ankle but i'm pretty sure that would count Sure, it sure is not horizontal. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's that's weird. They're gonna have to yeah. go through the cast and just individually pick out kicks that are gonna be counterable and with this move. Players are gonna have to do that too to figure yeah. out what they can use. This that, that, there's a redditor pl plant planner on doing that right now. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. And so uh, he also he also got a new throw, a new normal throw, and this is weird. It, they they haven't explained anything about it whether this is a buff or a nerf but now if you grab somebody while they're crouching with a normal grab not a command grab it goes into a different animation and that's all we know we don't know if it's better if it does more damage if it, if it gives you better wake up advantage we're i mean the, the theory is that it does give you a better wake up advantage but mm -hmm. we don't know <laughs> we just we just don't know what the what the, the implications of that are Wow, and that's then, that's 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 odd. <laughs> and additionally, and the only thing that we can say is the true buff out of all of this is uh, the fact that he has he is receiving his flying headbutt, which is a move that he had in Street Fighter Four, and it was it was OP in Street Fighter Four. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're not gonna bring it back, but in Street Fighter Four, it did 500 stun just in one hit. Jeez. And you combo it into itself. You could do neutral jump headbutt into neutral jump headbutt off like like instant air neutral jump headbutt, and that would cause an instant stun from zero to a thousand. And so I, I very much doubt they're gonna bring that back, but it's the it's a move with that same animation that they're bringing. Okay. Hmm. Um, let's so, let's yeah. get let's get like one or two more. Okay. Yeah. And then um, another one that uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna explain the two ones. So those are all the ones that people are generally speaking happy about. Mm -hmm. These I'm gonna go over the two that people are upset with. Okay. And um, I'm gonna save the biggest uh, upset for for last. Oh, I'm gonna man. I'm gonna start with Ken. So Ken. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So Ken. Yeah, Ken players have been just having a rough time because yeah, since, since very, the beta, <laughs> very good in season one. He had a really high damage output. He had a thousand health. He had um, a lot of tools. He had a, a free meters DP. He was one of the the four people on the cast that could uh, that had that could use something invincible for free. Um, and so season one to season two, they they cut off his damage output, and so it's a lot lower now. Mm -hmm. It's like pretty much on par with the rest of the cast now. Um, and then they also took away a lot of the Tatsu shenanigans that he could do to, to shrink his hurtbox. They took away his meterless um, invincible DP. Um, and then what they did was they they gave him this cool overhead that was all of a sudden plus three on hit and plus minus two on block. And so it was a safe overhead that you could combo out of for tons and tons of damage. And so that was like his thing in, in <laughs> season two. Like he was the guy who could overhead you and then like take away half your health. And so now they're they're like, all right, maybe that was too good. Let's uh, let's take that away too. Well, they're not taking oh, wow. it away, but they're making it they're, they're making it minus four instead of minus two, which is still safer than most overheads. So it's still good, but it is a bit more risky now because yeah, now you can potentially be punished for uh, for for getting your overhead block. Um, and so people are really unhappy with that because they felt like like Ken was already kind of one dimensional and. Uh, this is just another nerf on top of all that. <laughs> yeah, they've they've changed the way that people need to play Ken like drastically throughout these uh, these updates. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. I remember learning Ken and not knowing that his uh, medium DP was uh, invincible on frame one. I I just assumed that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So you know, when I incorporated that into my game, I was able to like get out of block strings. Um, you you know like uh improper like frame traps and all that i was able to use that tool and i thought that you know with that it came with its own set of you know 
risk versus reward because if I guess wrong, I'm getting punished. You know, crush counter, full damage, you know, the whole nine. But man, when they took that out, it, it definitely changed um you know how I play that character and, and, and you know, not not for for the best because I still like the DP a lot. <laughs> and then, so oh, the last thing, and I, last... it's it's hard for me to even talk without just sighing and, and putting my face my, my hand my hand on my forehead. But uh, uh -oh. so Cammy's one of the characters who was good in season one, um, and then they changed her between season one and season two. Like season one, everybody was like, "All right, Cammy, she's like, she's not top five, but she's like like number number like." four five or six like something she, she's like up there right yeah. mm -hmm. and then uh between season one and season two they they nerfed some things and they buffed some things but like the buffs were gr just dramatically better than the nerfs that she got like the the nerfs that she got were her her dive kicks are now anti-airable they, they would stuff a lot of anti-airs before mm -hmm. and um they're no longer always plus on block if you spend meter or do v trigger like now she actually has to space them she can't just throw them out randomly if, and then and then be plus and um and then they gave her a whole, a whole bunch of plus uh, a whole bunch of additional frame data on her normal so that like her her rushdown game became a way better on the ground and like they they pretty much made it so that her ground game was like the best and then her air game was like not quite the best anymore <laughs> and so now with this new change they felt quote end quote uh uh we noticed that cammy's ex cannon spike sometimes missed in combos uh we also felt her move set was not quite complete, um, so they decided to uh, to to give her give her an air throw, and I'm just like, okay. Well, she had I'm an air like, throw in Street Fighter Four. Yeah, she, she has did. an air throw now. It's just a command yeah. air throw. It's all it's off of her hooligan. Right, and right, so now okay. She do it, <laughs> right? Like wow. now she can just jump, grab you out the air, and throw you onto the ground. And it's like it's like the air throw is not going to make her overpowered. It's not. It's 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 just. I mean, she already had really good anti airs. Right, she always, she already had really good options uh, for knocking you out of the sky. The question is just why? Like, why would you give a character that was already good, and more that was tools, yeah, solidly yeah. top five in season two already, and then give her more tools? Like, I don't understand the the rationale there. And the reason why I am particularly butthurt about it is because <laughs> of the fact that uh, that my character Karen, she does not have an air throw, despite the fact that she had one in her, in her previous iterations and previous games. Yeah, no, and she's the one ca character in the game that could use it the most. Because you ask, you know, how's Karen? Oh, yeah, she's good. She's really good. She doesn't have any good anti airs, though. That's what everybody says. And if yeah. she were to have access to an, her, her air throw from Alpha 3, I feel like that would bounce her out a lot better. And so they give it to Cammy, and they don't give it to Karen. And I'm just like, all right, you know what? I don't, even, I don't even care anymore. I don't even, yeah, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> well, uh, if you guys want to see the uh, the full list of um, you know balance changes to all the characters, all that's going to be in our show notes and in the description. You can check those out. Uh, we want to thank Oliver for coming through and uh, giving us the, a breakdown of uh, a lot of the changes. Um, you know, thanks for 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 hurting me, uh, letting me know, <laughs> <laughs> telling me that my character is even worse. That that made me feel oh so good. Uh, we look forward to having you back on the podcast in a full capacity uh, with your, your your picture, so they can see your beautiful face and your, your couch in the background. Uh, so oh, yeah, oh yeah, that old couch. That old couch. Uh, so yeah, thanks again to Mount Lover, um, and uh, we'll see you next time, sir. Uh, thank you again. Right, thanks for having me. No see problem. You guys later. Thank you. Right. Okay, so uh, with that, we can go ahead and uh, move on to the next story. And old baby. Mount Lover had his turn. That was my turn. Cause we about to talk about some Sonic. <laughs> we about to talk about the boy Sonic. Okay. So uh, on Thursday, uh, Sega held a panel at South by Southwest as a part of their um, like gaming. Um, I, I guess they had a bunch of gaming panels. It's South by Southwest 2017 uh, right. gaming, and uh, Sega was there, and they were there to premiere. Uh, some news and updates for the upcoming Sonic games for this year, uh, Sonic Mania and Project Sonic 2017. Uh, well, we got some good news and we got some bad news. We're going to go ahead and start off with uh, the bad news, I, I guess we could say, uh, because Sonic Mania has been delayed. Uh, it was scheduled to be released uh, in the spring. They didn't have an official release date or uh, an actual like day that it was coming out. But it was scheduled to come out in the spring, and so um, 
Uh-huh. The, early, the earliest would have been, what, this week, the latest in, like, the in middle of June, right? Right, something like that. Um, and, you know, that's that's unfortunate. Um, you know, the one of the developers, uh, Christian Whitehead, came out and, um, you know, said that, you know, they, they want to make sure that uh, the game is the best that they could possibly make it. But um, with that, they released a new trailer uh, for Sonic Mania showing off another one of the throwback stages which is flying battery zone uh the one uh, the second zone in sonic and knuckles so that you know you know a little bit of good with the bad you know it it sucks that games like this get delayed but i mean the last time that sega didn't delay uh a game so that they can make it better we got sonic 06 and (laughs) nobody wants another sonic 06 so i am no repeat of that mess no repeat offenses there so I, I can say that uh, I am happy that the game is being delayed, and I don't even think that it's being delayed, you know, because it's like, oh, well, it's not polished, it needs more work, blah, blah, blah. I think that it's being delayed because these guys are going to be adding in a lot of stuff. Right. You know, they, they've already stated that this isn't going to be just like, you know, your four zones and then we're out of here. Like, no, this is going to be a long game because in addition to the uh, throwback stages, they're going to be brand new stages. You know, they already showed off, um, you know, one. So we're going to be getting a lot more. You know, they also stated that they didn't want to spoil a lot of what Sonic Mania would be. Um, so we're probably not going to get too many more trailers, maybe like one or two. But, um, you know, and th- and that's 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 OK with me. You know, I'm, I'm totally fine with them uh, holding back on the info so that we can have that, you know, like, oh, yeah, that that hype factor when it comes out. Right. Um, it, it- it, it seems like even the, the trailers they released were um, trailers of classic levels. Yeah. Which so I mean they they they're keeping what's new very um, tight to their vest. It, it's going to be interesting to see what they have coming out. Right. Because even even when they released a lot of the uh, classic stages, you know the ones we're familiar with, there are new elements to these stages. They're not just one for one remakes. Uh, right. They, they've added like a whole bunch of new stuff. And I I had the uh, the trailer that they released uh, playing. On the screen here so you can see kind of some of the differences from the original um flying battery zone so i'm i'm super excited for mania i, I have my sonic shirt on if if you, <laughs> if you haven't noticed i'm all i'm all sonic out right now <laughs> you gotta represent um but yeah uh, along with that news we also got news of project 2017 um it has a title it's now what? called sonic forces and, um, you know, they haven't um, updated the release. They're still going to come out uh, holiday 2017. Uh, but what they did do, they what they the did do is they released that gameplay. Oh, oh man. man. And it and, looks so, so good. Well, we, we've, we've <laughs> talked about um, Sonic, what we're calling now Sonic Forces, as it is. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about it a couple of times. And, I, you know, my stance was always, I want to see, I want to see. And, man, it... it it definitely looks like a, a, a game that you, you're going to want to go buy. I, I mean, it, it looks right. great. I mean, just for, I think the trailer is about a minute, 55, yeah, 47 it's only, seconds. Yeah, it's only about 45 something seconds, yeah. but it does uh, show off some elements. And, right. Uh, I kind of want to go into a little bit of detail here. Um, so, first off, the game is running on um, the Hedgehog Engine uh, number two, Hedgehog Engine 2. Um, anybody who's familiar with Sonic games knows that um, since Sonic Unleashed, uh, they've been using uh, Hedgehog Engine and you know modified versions of it, but uh, Sonic Forces is going to be using the next iteration of the Hedgehog Engine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also announced that there are going to be three different game types: one for modern Sonic, which is what I'm displaying on the screen here right now, and this is what they showed off. Uh, they're also going to have Classic Sonic, which is most likely going to play very similarly to the way that he played in Sonic Generations. And then they said there's going to be a third game type, and they did not announce what that was going to be. They did not announce that. Um, you know, everybody's, you know, throwing out their guesses. My guess is that it's going to be something similar to um, the adventure uh, series where the levels were kind of like open-ended and, mm-hmm. you know, Sonic didn't control the same way that he does right now. He was kind of a uh, more, um, you know, not, not so focused on the boost mechanic like uh, the modern games are. Right. But, um, you know, it, you know, your guess is, is you know, your guys' guess is as good as mine because uh, we probably won't get any more news on that for uh, quite some for time. For a little even. while. Yeah, they, uh, they did show gameplay, and while it does look good, it is very, very early. Um, 
they say they they're definitely trying to take uh, or they are taking advantage of the new hardware. Uh, this is their first title on uh, this generation of consoles with the Xbox One and PS uh, PS4. Right. So th- there's a there's a lot of power um, for them to to work with. Well, I mean, with, with a holiday release, I'm expecting for to see, see something um, at least coming up in at E3 and maybe um, um, games come over the summer. Yeah. So see to see more. Um, I mean, now, now that they gave us a name, they gave us some gameplay, um, I, I can imagine that they, they've got more to show us. And I'm, I'm excited to see what else they got to show me. Because just from the 45-second the gameplay, I, I, I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. Super, no, that, super no, excited. No, if you're excited, just ex- just imagine how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually watched the, uh, the uh, panel live, and in, in good old Sega fashion, they were unprepared. <laughs> uh, turns out that they did not know that the um the host South by Southwest was not um you know broadcasting um on Thursday they were they weren't doing any live broadcasts at live, all right. so you know it kind of left Sega in a in a bad spot and um the 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 fan communities took it upon themselves to get the panel to people by either like holding up phones and just like live streaming on like Facebook, Facebook or YouTube is, or on right. Twitch and uh, I have to give a shout out to TSSZ News, those guys are the ones that um you know were uh, hosting it initially, and then you know other people um you know Tails Channel, yeah, uh, picked up the you know the the podcast and uh, the the panel and tried to you know pick up the slack a little bit, help help those guys out because otherwise there would have been no uh, live feed for the panel. They they did not have time to um put anything together. Um, but you know the fan community definitely stepped up, and um, it, it was it was a good thing. It was a good thing that that they did. You know the audio was terrible, but I mean, <laughs> I mean we, we got to see some awesome stuff. And you know right. the, the day after that Friday or this this past Friday, they actually released they released the, a press kit. They released a press kit with with all of the trailers and right. news and um uh, a, a a song. I think I don't know if it's the main theme, but it's like a song from from the game very rock and rolly probably going to be some crush some good old-fashioned crush 40 action <laughs> so uh i'm i'm excited i am hella excited for sonic um you know forces sonic mania and um you know i'm i'm, I'm actually i'm happy that you know they're taking their times and they're putting the time and care into these games um that they've always deserved right in my opinion i agree i agree and and like, like I said, I've, I've been a Sonic. I have been a Sonic fan because I, I was a Sega Genesis fan. So Sonic One and Two, I played a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Sonic CD probably was my favorite. Yeah. Um, Sonic Boom. No, let me stop. Sonic Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm I haven't really kept up with Sonic after that. And and like you said, the the last couple of Sonic games weren't that great. Um, yeah. but Sonic but, Boom um, was terrible. Uh, Lost World was okay. But yeah, but this this uh, Sonic Forces just from the first look, it, it looks it looks great, and I'm I'm excited about that. Yeah, for yeah sure. it looks it looks really great. Um, looks like they're taking a, a darker tone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, instead of like the you know the kitty kitty fun time that they've been doing right. lately. A more a more uh more adult take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so so it got it has a lot of uh, fans uh, riled up, you know, and you know Sega has been on this this nice. This nice stride since 2016 with you know the anniversary and like all of the the events you know the releases they've been a really they've been doing a really good uh job promoting these two games um so big shout out to uh you know sega's freaking press team because they're they're doing a fantastic job they just need to to hire me as their sound guy <laughs> that's all you need to do sega if you're listening <laughs> i deal with podcasts i can i can i can help you out my boy like let me get up in there and uh, we'll we'll have that sound freaking good to go because like god damn <laughs> they're 0 for two for for freaking panels in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> they always having uh, troubles over there um but yeah let's let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next story and, and give Boogie a, a chance to talk over here I, I feel like me and Yama kind of <laughs> yeah. me and Mount Lover just kind of took over <laughs> oh Street Street Fighter Five that's Yama's thing right? yeah that's, that's Yama's that's thing there was, there was yeah there was no way that I was gonna be able to explain that in 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 mm-hmm. anything close to what he did in detail I probably would have went over the general stuff and then Ken and then just complained for like thirty minutes but <laughs> and, and then and then I mean you are true Sonic. So yeah, I'm the who, Sonic guy. Who else better to talk about Sonic than True Sonic, right? Yes, yeah. So let's so, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Uh, what what uh, do we got? 
Moving on to our next story, Washington, D.C. is getting an esports arena. Um, so exactly what's going on here is, is uh, they're, they're building an arena for the Washington Mystics. If you don't know the Washington Mystics, they're the WNBA team in the area, Washington, mm-hmm. D.C.'s WNBA team. Um, it's supposed to be a 4,200-seat arena, but they are fitting it for esports. They're going to wire it and, and set up a configuration for esports events. Um, and it's, it's being built in, in uh, what's it, Congress Heights? Yes, Congress okay. Heights that is being built in, um, which isn't the best neighborhood. It's, it's kind of a, a rundown um, ho- neighborhood. We, we is. in the hood. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely hey, call, hood, it, call it what it is, man. <laughs> yeah, part, part of the reason they're building it there is to try to revitalize the area. Okay. Um, so sense. they're they're going to be bringing the Mystics there. Um, most of most of the um, cost is being footed by the city, um, and then with that arena being built events dc now events dc is actually a city um is is a is a city um organization okay. they're run by the city the city points appoints the board of directors and events dc usually handles uh the conventions and such um in the in uh sporting events some sporting events in, in the city um concerts and even stuff like that so um is Events DC will be sponsoring an esports team, Energy Sports, NRG okay. Sports. Um, they do Hearthstone, they do Overwatch, and they have a Counter Strike Go professional. They have um, Counter Strike Go professional competitive teams. So they're going to be sponsoring that the esports team as well as building building this arena. Um, this is the first um, esports arena. Let's say in, in quotes because it's actually a, a basketball arena that's right. being fitted for esports. Being fitted for esports, right? Um, but this is the first one I've heard about in, in the in the country, and and it's just more proof that esports are moving more and more towards the mainstream. Yeah, I mean, because we, we ha- go ahead. I said we we had stories with the NBA launching their own yeah. um, <laughs> their own league, E-League. and we the E League, and we we have many uh, several sports teams and sports owners that have invested into esports teams and esports leagues. So yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I was about to bring up. Is that you know this is probably going to be like the the home turf for whatever e e league um for the Washington Wizards you know or whatever right. yeah Ted, Ted Leonsis I, I think he's he owns the Wizards and mm-hmm. um I, I believe if I'm not mistaken I'll probably I'm gonna look this up but I'm gonna look it up and see if he invested in in an esports team at some point as a sponsor I believe he did but I, I could be wrong yeah I don't I don't see why he wouldn't you know with um you know them building the esports arena like that that just it's just you know, go where the money's where the money is, man. And esports is definitely where the money is. Yep. So th- this is this is definitely going to be a multi-purpose arena. It's, it's going to be used for WNBA, um, the Washington Mystics home games. It's also going to be used for by the Wizards um, as a practice facility, and then it's going to be um, able to you, they'll be able to host esports events here in DC. Well, I, so I, I'm actually kind of excited. The first event I hear going here coming there, I'm definitely going to go check yeah, it out. I, I want to check it out. I'm, I'm Regardless actually, of what it is. yeah, because you know a lot of the esports stuff, um, it's it's not done prim- primarily done on, on on this side of the country. You might have some no. down in Florida and like maybe like in Cali or something like that. Right. But you know, like those are like your 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 big congregated areas for for you know gaming or or what have you. Because a lot of times, weren't a lot of the, like I know in Florida they they usually did them on uh, at Disney, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then a lot of these things like happen like out out of the country altogether. Right. Most of them, yeah. Like over in Most like Europe or something like that. Jordan. Some of the bigger ones, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this this has definitely helped put a, at least especially on the East Coast, unless um, get a a steady venue for for esport events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, you know, a, a reinsurgence in uh, you know investment in in gaming. Yeah. So, so we'll we'll see how it goes, you know. And I actually, I actually want to go too. We'll we'll have to coordinate and figure out, you know, when the first event is going. We should we should go, man. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that'd I'm, be, I'm, that'd be I'm, dope. I'm, we could be live on the scene. <laughs> yeah. Live stream it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd, that'd be cool. To my head. Yeah. Yep. Hey, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. So that that's gonna be fun. But um, yeah. Um, definitely excited for it. We'll we'll see. What comes of it? Uh, is there any time frame on you know when that's going to be finished or whatnot? Um, they, I know they broke ground. They don't have an uh, a specific date or um, to complete it. There have actually been protests because mm-hmm. um, you know it's, it's a it's a um, issue with gentrification. You know, in any time you you start moving into you know building arenas, 
develop big name developers want to get out the you know they want to get out the riffraff and try to bring oh, in like well, yeah, of course. more expensive housing more expensive stores and shops and stuff like that so that's been an issue um especially out in congress heights because it is one of the more it's one of the poor neighborhoods in the dc area yeah, goodbye shoppers I, hello whole foods like that's what right. we're trying to do out there it's essentially yep it's yeah. essentially that's what that's what it's going to be um so there's there's a there's a bit of issue with that and consternation with that but i mean if you've been i mean i, I live in the area and you know i go out and i do photo walks mm -hmm. you know i'll walk around and if you've been to that area it's 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 pretty horrible um it is is bad i mean yeah, i mean people you, you live in any they're living in these row houses that look like they should be abandoned so yeah. i mean i mean it's, it's it's good that they want to you know revamp those areas but not at not at an expense to those people that right. are currently inhabiting yeah. those. They areas. they need they need to bring the people up instead of chasing them out. Yeah. That's always been a problem with gentrification because the people that have been living there most of the times they're living there because that's all they can afford. Right. It's probably like you, start, you know lower income housing like right. area. So right. So I, it'd be interesting to see what they do to that. But yeah. um, well, yeah. Good yeah. news. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah, good news mostly, but, you know, on the other side, you know, there's there's always something on the underlying uh, side there. So right. uh, we'll, we'll definitely be following it, and uh, we'll update you guys on any any changes or any developments within that. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into our next story. And, um, Boogie, let me ask you a question. Shoot. Have you been playing For Honor lately? Um, I haven't played For Honor since I got on there and got my ass whipped by some <laughs> shitty player <laughs> That paid his way to to um, being good. Because and, and, and let me tell you, yeah. I'm not the greatest player. I've actually figured out my guy, the Lawbringer. I mm -hmm. figured him out. I know he's got a parry. I was getting a time and good. And anytime I fought this guy, I was beating the brakes off of him. Yeah. But he he's like a prestige three third knighthood or whatever you want to call it. Okay. And his armor is like was 110, 105 or something like that. And um. I would hit like he would block two or three times and go into revenge. Yeah, and yeah, it's his armor. His armor is doing yep. that. Yeah, and, and what what made me realize he was the bad player is because he kept doing the same combo over and over. Left overhead, left, left overhead, left every time. I mean, he wasn't a good player. I, I can tell he wasn't a good player, but because he out he his armor outclassed me, I couldn't really do much to him. Right. Yeah, yeah, that that that's a a major a major problem. You know the the pay to win st um, style that they have going on with for uh, with for honor. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, what you can do is you can use either um, real money to buy in game currency, or you know just grind your way through the game um, to get you know pretty beastly armor that just increases your stats. And uh, once you get your revenge meter, you know you also get like you know like a, um like an armor boost or whatnot. Yeah. You get an armor boost, you yeah. get a health buff, and like some of the characters have special moves where anytime they go in, they can knock you down or they can stun you or, right, or right. they so have you, you get a lot. You get a lot of extra like stat um, enhancing abilities when you're in revenge mode, and then right. some armor makes it uh, so that you can get revenge mode uh, more frequently. And you know that's the problem that we've been having, where or have it last forever, right? Where where lower level people like a, a prestige two or something has like prestige nine um, t style armor, right? Or, or, or the benefits of a prestige nine uh, armor. But uh, let me ask you a follow up question: um, Have you ever dealt with somebody just like just being AFK, just like not playing the game? Have you dealt a with that? AFK from and for honor, I think maybe once or twice. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, the time I've dealt with it, they were on the other team. As a matter of fact, I remember it was it was uh it was it was three consecutive matches. It was the same guy. Mm -hmm. we we're playing um we weren't playing skirmish, we we're playing deathmatch. Mm -hmm. Four and four deathmatch. And there's one guy was he was literally he would do um like a light light and spin in a circle, like kind of run in a circle. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm assuming that he just rigs his controller to to do that. Yeah. Um and yeah, I actually did run into it. it yeah, it, I, I have too. Um, there was this one game. Um, this is actually a recent um, session that I played. I jumped in um, and the guy just like wasn't moving. Or actually he was moving, but he wasn't fighting. If you actually play it, pay attention to the character, he was, he was like in a corner and he was kind of just like fidgeting like this, right. like just like wobbling back and forth. Right. And um, what that is, is uh, it's called um, AFK farming. Because even if you lose a match, win or lose a match, you get experience. And it's and a significant honor. amount of exp experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, this story deals with that, you know, because uh, Ubisoft has um, started handing out suspensions for AFK uh, farmers, and they are threatening uh, bans. Uh Total uh, bans, yeah, to account bans. Total, total bans. Actually, there was an uh, there was an update to it. I'm looking at the official uh, subreddit, and um, mm -hmm. they've already, um, you know, on during the first wave, they've uh, handed out uh, 1,500 three day bans for AFK mm -hmm. farmings, and around 4,000 new AFK farmers got detected and were, will receive a receive warning. A war right. So, so that's kind of like how it's gonna go down. Like the, the when they detect it, you receive a warning. And if, um, you know, it continues, you'll either be banned temporarily or permanently. And, you know, that that's that's the kind of the, the direction uh, that they're heading in. And I, I can't blame them. You know, I haven't been on the game as much uh, recently because of uh, all of the other games that I've been playing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can say that one once that happened, I was super pissed. Right. I was it super is pissed. It's, it's super it's super frustrating, extremely frustrating when the AFK farmer is on your team. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's definitely a pain. It's annoying when you see somebody on the other team doing it. But um, I, I I haven't played enough to really notice it. Like I said, I, I, I kind of got annoyed after I ran into the, the pay-for-play um, champion. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I did run into it the, that one time. Yeah, so, so so it's super frustrating, and I didn't even know that it was much, uh, you know, I didn't know that it was that big a, of a problem. I didn't know it was on that big of a scale that right. a lot of people were doing it, and like I didn't even notice what was happening until you know until I read this story, mm -hmm. because uh, these people are um, either using some kind of like hack or like rigging their controllers. They so just rigging it. So this is the thing I'm going to say, mm -hmm. and this is partly the developer's fault. Because as a developer, you need to have something for it. Like you can't do that in Overwatch. No. You can't even do it in Destiny. You still get kicked if you don't. Right. If, I you, mean, if you're if, if you're not moving, you're not participating. Right. You get kicked if, for like in in act for being inactive. Inactive. Right. But that's, they, they, but that's the thing. Like the the game detects that the character is moving because well, that's what they're that's, doing. That's the the problem is, it's it's simple detection in Ubisoft and with with in For Honor, all they're doing is checking for movement. Right. Mm, yeah. But and like it's and a lot of the other games that that will boot you, like I said, Overwatch does it. If you rig your control and you just run it in a circle, you'll still get booted from Overwatch because it detects you doing. You're not doing any um, uh, how will I say? You're not doing any natural game and movements. Right. You're not. Right? You're, not you're not shooting. You're not. You know, right. the scoping right. in or doing anything like that. Right. So it detects you and will kick you. So I don't understand why that's that hasn't been about. Why or how that hadn't been implemented in For Honor? Because in For Honor, there's there's no point in For Honor where you're going to be sitting in a corner or just you know doing the same thing over and over for five, ten, fifteen minutes in a match. Right. I mean, you know, you got to block, you got to attack. You're you're going to try to parry. You're going to try to roll. You're going to try to do a whole bunch of different inputs. It's a fighting game. Right. And if you're not if you're not making um, controller moves, uh, fighting type. Um, Inputs, like, yeah, commands or inputs, yeah, yeah, it, it should detect that and boot you anyway. Yeah, so, so yeah, one part, you know, people just exploiting the game. Another part, you know, lousy detection from from Ubisoft. Right. So I'm yeah, not it, really sure, you know, who is more at fault here. I, I think is equally. I mean, it, yeah, I, 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 I would actually put put the onus more on the developer than than the gamer mm -hmm. because we know how gamers are. Yeah, and developers know how gamers are. They know they're going to do these things, so you have to, you you do have to um, plan for them for a gamer to be doing that. And it, if you don't implement the proper um, um detections, it, that's your fault. Yeah, yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna start handing out um, suspensions and bans. I can't blame them for it. You know, this didn't seem like a problem uh, on, you know, that I was having personally. You know, like multiple right. times. But, you know, to see that this is actually a thing and that, you know, on their their official website, you know, they, they had to, you know, make a statement like it's it's crazy. It's crazy. The links people will go to, you know, gimp a freaking video game or right. experience or, you know, that, power ups or, or what have you. That's just that's just life. I mean, that's how people are. Right. For every 10 people, there's at least one cheater. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah so. So. Yeah, and this like, man, this seems to be like a reoccurring conversation that we we keep coming back to, where we're talking about how 
gaming but, co- yeah, different <laughs> gaming uh, developing companies are you know trying to figure out ways to stop people from cheating in their freaking game. It's right. it's freaking crazy. It's crazy how often it, we come we come back to this. It's it's it's, it's definitely a blight in the gaming community. It yeah. definitely is a blight because there's, there's not many other places. I mean, anytime like. You play pickup basketball, even or, or <laughs> you know, you, you you go you go you go to the health club and you you play some uh, what, what do they call it um um a handball or, or something like that. You yeah. don't get people cheated. People are honorable. They're not going to cheat you. Yeah. I mean, you you may get some arguments because there's a disagreement on whether it's a foul or not. But I mean, people aren't just outright cheating. You're not going to find anybody running around a circle on a basketball court. Yeah. Cheating. You might right? get you might get that one dude that just like to play with his elbows, but I mean, right. right. So I, I just I don't understand that cheat culture in the in the gaming where it's just everybody they want to find the quickest easiest way. And I mean, and to be quite honest, the games aren't that hard. It's not right. like these games I mean, are impossible. Well, I will say that the um, the matchmaking in uh, for honor is 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 pretty uneven. It's it's, it's bad. There's a lot of problems with Fauna. The matchmaking is is bad. The the um I'm the still, way they I'm still having connection issues, dude. Yeah, it's it's they, that's that's the next thing I was going to say. The way they implemented their um PDP connection, because mm-hmm. basically, you know, typically in a peer to peer connection, right? When you do peer to peer, you have one host and everybody connects to the host, right? Right. Um, and for Fauna, the way they set it up is everybody connects to each other. Right. So. That that's why when you get somebody to drop, the game has to reset. Right. Every, everybody everybody has to re it has to rebuild the connection with everybody. Right. And then since the game is drop in and drop out, once somebody new comes in, they have to be synced up with everybody. Right. So and, you and just get these massive breaks in, in gameplay and, when you know people are uh, jumping in and out of the freaking matches. Which also that, that, has to be uh something needs to be done with that. I feel like we should have like separate lobbies, like, you know, player lobbies and Freaking rank lobbies because people be dropping like flies when we do we start yeah, losing, they, man. They need to start. They need to start adding the XP penalty. Yeah, something, right. something. Yeah, there's a, a lot of things need to happen before. Honor. I love the game, but it, it definitely has its problems. Yeah, is 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 there's some issues? Um, com- there's some community issues. Um, there's some net network uh, network or net code issues that that need to be taken care of. Yeah. Um, but uh, overall, it's a solid entry. It's a very good game. I mean, um, and it's a, and it's a new IP. It's fresh, man. Right. It's fresh. It's, I'm just hoping. I mean, it's, it's it seems to have been popular. Hopefully, it stays popular and Ubisoft keeps it. Follow, does a good follow up on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they still have what they still have the season pass to to work on. You know, with new characters. Yeah, so, new characters coming. Yeah. Um, I, I have no doubt in my mind that you know, alongside just trying to add more to the game, you know, yeah. content wise, they're going to be trying to f- fix you know some real fundamental problems. I, and I, I, I honestly can't wait for those. Right. I, I I just look at what they did with Division for 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 better or for worse. The the way they worked Division from the huge mess it was to a, a playable game, as fa- as well as you know implementing community input. Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, if, if they they went through that lanes with Division, I, I can't imagine them just say, hey, okay, we're just gonna throw this out there and let it be. No. I, I can imagine they they're gonna support it and and correct it, it to file the issues with it and and continue to make it a better game. Yeah, I I agree. I agree one hundred percent. 100% agree with that. So, um shouts out to Ubisoft, you know. I'm 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 always ro- I'm always rooting for the for those guys, man. <laughs> I find myself rooting for those guys all the time. So, um, you know, they try well, stuff. They they try stuff, dude. They they try stuff and they try to do it right and if they do it wrong, then they try and fix it. Right. And you you cannot you can't harp on a a, a company whose, you know, business model is to, you know, do it and, you know, fix it if it's wrong. You can't I right. can't I can't get mad at them. And I can't get mad at them for banning motherfuckers for cheating. <laughs> no. And the one thing about that is I, I did look at the numbers. I mean, the numbers were actually is is essentially about five thousand, fifty five hundred people, mm-hmm. which is it's a lot. Of, it's a ton of people, but if you think it's not that huge, it's not tens of thousands. So no, good for them for even catching the small ones, the right. small amounts is is good. Yeah, I mean, and this was just the initial, uh, the the first wave. So we'll right. we'll see what. Um, what comes up, you know, later, later waves or whatever. I'm not sure how often the system like goes and, you know, looks for it or if it's like constantly looking out. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but, um, good on, good on Ubisoft, man. Um, and hopefully, you know, they can turn, um, for honor into a, um, a more pleasant experience for everybody. 
Right. Yeah. Um, so with that, we can go ahead and uh, move on to uh, our last story in our top five. Um, yeah. What do we got? We got PlayStation 4 exclusives coming to PlayStation Now service, Ugh. which is it's, it's interesting. Because it is very interesting. What, and what's mm-hmm. what's. What's now is they, they they specifically said PlayStation Four exclusives, which indicates me indicates to me that other publishers weren't really ready to get on board with them. Right. Um. But um, a couple of a couple of weeks ago, we talked about PlayStation Now dropping support for everything except for PlayStation Four and PlayStation Now, and this makes in hindsight this makes a lot of sense. Right. Um, I mean, you can't play, you really am not going to be able, or they really don't want you to play a PlayStation 4 game on the PS Vita or on the PlayStation 3, because then what's the point of buying the PlayStation 4? Right, and, and you know, they cut the services on uh, everything else, too. Remember, we right. talked about that in the previous podcast. But I, I think it's, it'll it make this definitely a more compelling service. Um, I still think it's for 20 bucks a month. I mean, for to stream a few games for 20 bucks a month, I, I don't, I still don't like that. Um <laughs> So, I mean, it's it's up to you to decide whether... I mean, my, my thing is... So, the PlayStation 4 games are going to be higher resolution, more fidelity, which means to stream it, you're going to need better better bandwidth. Yeah. Right? Um, so, it's, it's, I'm interested to see how that's going to work, what kind of bandwidth you do need. Um, again, we talk about this all the time, and, and especially just here, just here in the United States. I'm not talking about worldwide. I'm just talking about here in the United States, the huge difference in... Um, network availability and, and high speed internet availability across the country. Yeah. I mean, here on the East Coast, we're lucky. We're in, we're in the DC area. We get great internet. Um, if you drive, what well, you say, you're in Woodbridge, right? So you drive, yeah. you drive a couple hours west, going out towards Leesburg and Winchester, those areas. They'd be lucky. They'd be, they're lucky they're getting five, five to ten megs on DSL. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Comcast. There's no Comcast. There's no Verizon Files. There's none of that. They just got DSL from whoever the local carrier is. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, when you're putting more stress on that type of infrastructure, I, I don't see how how successful this, this streaming type service will be. Yeah, I mean, and if you if you go back to the previous uh, episodes, you know, I I talked about my problems with uh, PlayStation Now. Um, I, I don't I don't really see the appeal. I, honestly, I mean they they gave a few uh, a list of a few games that are becoming uh, that are due to uh, drop down uh, pretty soon. Uh, we have uh, the Red Dead Redemption, Tekken Tag Tournament Two, uh, Mortal Kombat. I'm I'm assuming that's Mortal Kombat uh, X. Um, Injustice, uh, 2K14, Batman, Arkham Origins. I mean, these are these are. <sighs> well, those those are like the, those were like the top played games for mm-hmm. the, on the PlayStation Now service, and those are all those all those games that were mentioned are all PS3 version of the games. Those aren't PS4 games. They didn't announce what games would be coming out for PS4. Only that there would be. They were exclusive games. So I think Last of Us Remastered, Uncharted, Uncharted trilogy, um, whatever. Yeah, that stuff. I mean, maybe the baseball game, MLB The Show. That's another exclusive. And Ratchet my, and Clank, stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Exactly. So, and my my guess would be stuff that are Sony published too. So, I mean, like some of these games, like for instance, Near Automata. Yeah. Um, that's not even though it's exclusive to the PlayStation, it's not published by Sony. Well, so. that's actually out on PC. It came out today, I believe. Oh, that's right. Well, it's console. Right it's console exclusive. Console exclusive, right? Yeah. Um. So. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I won't expect those games to be on there. Again, I don't think publishers are really on board, board with their streaming service. No, no, they they probably see some of the downsides of it. You know, mm-hmm. what you know, especially streaming. You know, some of these you know newer games. You know, for right. for last gen, it may not have been uh, that much of a problem. Right, because there's there's not a market for purchase. Anytime it's, it's current gen games. You know, they always got that nineteen ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine greatest hits or, you know, discounted price. They can get something out of it yeah. as opposed to putting it on the streaming service and get a cut of nineteen ninety nine a month. I mean I don't, I don't know who's gonna I'm not dude, that like how much was Gamefly back in the day? Did you ever try out Gamefly? Um, I didn't. That's still a thing. Um Is my it? brother yeah, my brother does it. I think he pays ten dollars a month for $10, one game. Ten dollars a month for one game. Yeah. Practically the same service, dude. 
and for multiple consoles. It's like this this doesn't this doesn't appeal to I don't know who this appeals to. Like if 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 PlayStation 4 is the only console that you have, fine. But like if if you have if you have like a an Xbox One, you have a PC, you have a Nintendo Wii U or a Switch or whatever, like paying an extra twenty dollars on top of twenty dollars per month on top of the sixty dollars per year for PlayStation Plus is not worth it, man. I I don't yeah I don't agree I I, I agree I don't I don't think the I think the pricing is way off right um to, to, like just real quick GameFly is nine dollars well. It's fifteen dollars a month if you pay pay month to month. If you mm. pay for it, um, you can pay three months at a time. It'd be nine fifty, or you can pay uh, two games for three months at a time. It's twenty three dollars. So yeah, it's, it's a, a few, I few guess, different pay, payment plans. Right, but it, essentially, it's about ten dollars a month. 10, between ten and fifteen dollars a month. Yeah, I um, don't know. And currently, there's only about like five hundred games on PS PS uh, PS Now. PS Now. I I, I just don't. I, the price is off. I mean, ten dollars a month would be a better, much better price. Um, we talked about this last week or a couple of weeks ago, where it'd be better if they can just lump it into the PlayStation, um, PS, PlayStation, PS Plus. PSN Plus. Yeah, the PlayStation Plus um, subscription. I mean, even if they have to raise the price, I guess. Um, but as a standalone for twenty dollars a month, I, I just like you said, I, I don't. I think it's a limited, um, limited audience. Um, for those that maybe don't want to buy a PlayStation, maybe they have a nice PC, they're PC gamers, um, and they didn't, they have no I, no plans at all to buy a PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it might appeal to somebody like that that wants to play some of these uh, PlayStation exclusive games that show up. I can see that possibly. Yeah, or um, but, maybe you're just younger and you just didn't experience PlayStation Three. Like it, it, it might appeal to you then. I don't know. Right. But yeah. As somebody who's owned the previous generation that has, I've played just about every game on that um, the the top most popular games. I play like, play all of them. I I still own some of them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, dude, like, why would I want to? Why would I want to do that? Like, no, I'm I'm good. I but- I am good with my Xbox Live subscription getting, you know, four games per month at for with the games for gold. Uh, in addition to being able to play games that I currently have that are like, you know, stuck the way in my shelves via backwards compatibility. Right. I'm good. Just real quick off topic. Did you see that uh, Street Fighter 4 was released on backwards compatibility this week? No. I, oh, no, I didn't see that. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man, time, time to dust off that that uh, that Cody that I've been uh, I, holding I still back. Have that. I have that digitally. I still have that. Oh, yeah, I have that. I, I have the, uh, the disc. And I, I yeah. also, I, but I also have it on PC, the Ultra Street Fighter Four. Right, but yeah, but, I, yeah. Like, like but, I, said, I think it's li- limited, limited um, audience, especially with with the requirements. I, my biggest issue is two issues. My biggest two issues are the price. I think the price is way out of league, and and then the the network requirement. I yeah. mean, people in the big city, in in big cities, um, they're fine, but most everybody else, they're, it's problematic with them. Yeah. But, you know, don't take our word for it, because uh, if you look on the uh, show notes, uh, you can see that they're offering a seven-day trial. All you have to do is just, you know, click the link, and uh, we'll have that down in the uh, description in the show notes. Click the link and sign up, and you can get a free seven-day trial. Check it out. Check it out for yourself. PlayStation Now. So check it out yourself. And um, if you do, let us know. Let us know what you think about it. Is, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? it you know is the selection of games is it good is it bad is it you know is it to be desired um you know let us know because as as it stands i'm good homie right it's it's i i yeah no sense made at all no no i'm i'm good i am good um but yeah that was our top five news stories for the week um let us know what you think about you know all of the stories that we talked about you know and uh, you can also submit stories to us via our social media. Um, just you know, hit us up and let us know what you guys think. Um, but with that said, we're going to go ahead and move into our quick hits. And if you're new to the podcast, the quick hits section is where we talk about some of the more smaller scale stories that didn't really merit a full you know discussion and breakdown, but stuff that we definitely still wanted to talk to you about. Um, so let's go ahead with our first uh, quick hit. What we got? Um, we got a couple of updates from Overwatch. Osira, the new tank, 
um, mm-hmm. will be released this Tuesday, uh, March 30, uh, March 30, March 21st. Um, Osiris coming out. Osiris is ten character. She's a centaur robot, centaur omnic. Um, she's a she buffs. She does an attack buff. Um, she does a debuff on the enemies. Uh, she has a barrier shield, and uh, yeah, she's coming out. Okay, I feel really bad for not playing Overwatch in a very long time. <laughs> I don't. I, I feel really terrible because it's it's so fun. Yeah, it is. Um, I haven't played. You know, I remember at one point I was like all Overwatch. I haven't touched Overwatch in probably a couple weeks now. Yeah, but I, I definitely will pick it up this coming. Well, not this Tuesday because I got Mass Effect. You coming. got that Mass Effect baby. But I'll be picking it up coming. I'll, I'll pick it up again just so I can play around with those those Sire. In fact. The last I played with Overwatch, because I don't like the bash. See, I, this is what happens. Yeah, the bashing with, changes. Yeah. With first-person shooters, when the meta changes to something I don't like, I stop playing it. And um, I don't like the ba- the current meta with the with the bashing buff, so I kind of stopped playing it. Yeah. I just didn't like losing, and uh, <laughs> I was doing that a lot. So I stopped playing. You got to get on that rule hog, man. <laughs> Fuck rule hog, man. I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> Roadhog uh, and uh, the freaking May, the freaking ice bitch. I hate that. Oh, yeah, I don't... She's fun too. She's a troll character. Yeah, she be trolling. She be trolling <laughs> my Zarya, fucking freezing me so I can't fucking zap her dumbass. <laughs> Let's move on to the uh, next then, quick. quick uh, oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, then Lucio. Lucio. Um, Lucio's cool. Every, everybody's favorite Hilla is getting nerf buffed. I say he's getting nerf buffed <laughs> because <laughs> the, he's getting nerf. He's getting a nerf. So. The way Lucio works, he, he's an AOE, area of effect type character. Yeah. If you're close to Lucio, you're going to get his heal buff or you're going to get his um, speed buff. Well, they're decreasing his range by two-thirds. So in the, game, it notes, in the game, it notes that within 30 meters, he can heal. You, you can get his buff, right? Um, they're going to be changing that to 10 meters. Um, but with that change, they're, they're buffing his healing factor by 50%. So oh. he's going to be able to heal you better. Uh, more, but he's got to be closer. You just got to fucking hug him. That's all. Right. So, <laughs> I, I mean, that that's going to cause problems because then, you know, if the team needs to get a whole group heal, they're going to want to group up and, you know. And then get freaking, get alt- bombarded. Mm-hmm. Bombarded. Yeah, get, it's get, high noon. It, yeah, high <laughs> noon. Freaking <laughs> sky from above, you know, rain like, from all, above. Yeah, all of like, that stuff. All of like, that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's something. Also, they're, they're buffing his um his push off. That if you know if you, you oh, if you hate use Lucio off. where you push people off the edge, um they're buffing that to where it's more effective. With the the aim is more effective on it. Mm-hmm. So, um there's a bunch of other stuff. Um this is currently on the PC public um test realm. Um I, I don't know if it's going to go live as is. They'll probably they'll tweak it as they normally do before they push it live. But that's something along the horizon on the horizon. I, I mentioned that because Lucio is probably the most played healer in Overwatch. Really? Um, you would think Mercy is. Mercy's cool. Nobody likes Mercy because yeah. she's a pocket healer. She only can heal one person at a time. True. She's easy. Yeah. Um, Lucio's... She's, she's, she's uh, healing for beginners. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think Lucio, especially when he uses his alt, um, that's, I've, I've used Lucio and, and one match is using his alt. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's, it's interesting. Yeah, and I'm very, just leave it at that. Very interesting. Uh, what's up, what's our next quick hit? Um, so the PlayStation Three, and if you didn't know, was still being produced. You know, they were still making PlayStation Threes. They were making them in Japan. I mean, and they're, they're they're making uh, free games on PlayStation Plus. You can only play with the PlayStation Three. So I, <laughs> I mean, I would assume they would keep making PS Threes. It's like, what what the hell is the point then? Well, that is going to be no more. PlayStation Three production is now coming to an end in Japan. Um, it was announced on the official Japanese PlayStation website that they'll be coming to an end sometime this spring, um, this month. Um, I guess there was a game store in, and I forget the name. I'm not even going to try to say it, actually. <laughs> um, but there's a game store in Japan that said that they got a memo saying that the no more new PlayStation will be shipped at by the end of this month. So. Oh, wow. Yep. Last of the PlayStation 3s. I mean, it, it, for... Just to put this in perspective, Xbox 360 went out of production April of last year. April 2016, Xbox 360 went out of production. So PlayStation held on for an extra year, but um, their time is coming to an end as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you still have a PS3 at this point, it's like, bruh. <laughs> like, well, 
I'm, yeah, I, I, I guess with the price drops now is more is is more cost effective. It's easier to get. I mean, PlayStation Four when it first came out was what four hundred dollars. Yeah, and no. and now consistently you can get a PlayStation Four for two fifty. So I, I remember last summer when I was when I was Sans PlayStation, I was trying to decide if I wanted to wait or get a new PlayStation Three. Mm-hmm. I went to the GameStop, and they tried to sell me a used one for three hundred twenty dollars, and I was like, get out I'm, of here. I'm insulted. Thank yeah, you for your here. time. Yeah, you, yeah. you insult me, good sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will now but, take my leave. <laughs> I said I can. Get, I said I can get a brand new one with a game for three fifty. I can get a brand new one for three hundred. Why is this three fifteen? No game, just a PlayStation. He's like, well, used ones are are in high demand. I'm like, really? So it's so high that they're more expensive than a brand new one? That doesn't make any sense. It, it must have been like an early one or something. I don't know. I don't know. It, I I just walked away from it, and I'm glad I did because you know I would have bought that PlayStation, been upset about getting that and not getting the PlayStation Pro. Yeah, four Pro, but yeah, no more PlayStation threes. No more PlayStation threes. Um, to put it, because what's it called? The uh, the PlayStation Two lasted for a very long time in production. Yeah. I don't for I don't remember how many years it was, but uh, I think that that thing was in production for for like ever. It was. It, t- it took them a long time to shut down. Because remember, I think they wound up keeping it in production because the PlayStation 3 one was so expensive. Yeah. And, and the PlayStation 2 had a, such a huge catalog. Yeah. Huge catalog. And then any game that was being ported to the Wii could also be ported to the PS2. Right. It was the same <laughs> shit. Yeah. So, so yeah, rest in peace. Well, well, soon to be rest in peace to the PlayStation 3. Um, If you don't have one by now, I mean... I mean I, I would say go out and get it just so you can get those free games on uh, PlayStation Plus. Otherwise, how the hell are you going to play it? Like, I what's, say, what's, the, what's the point? I'll say don't bother. If you don't have a PlayStation 3, yeah, just skip it. Just skip it? Yeah. It's yeah. no point. All right. And our last quick hit, what we got? Um, I'm going to let you go with this one. Okay. Um, Super Mario Run uh, will be hitting the Google Store on the 23rd of this month. So that is when? Uh, Thursday? This third, this upcoming Thursday, um, people can get their hands on Super Mario Run on Android devices. That, that's you. That's that's me. The, the thing is, I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's awesome. I'm sorry. Like when we when we previously talked about it, um, we talked about how it you know had this this boost in you know interest and like everybody wanted it. Everybody needed to have their hands on it. It was everything that everybody talked about. And then, like, I kind of started dying down. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I was kind of just waiting for it to just come out so that it can be that, you know, resurgence of, like, energy for this game. But it's like, I feel like they waited too long. I don't care anymore. They, they should have released it before the Switch came out. The or, Switch stole all, stole all the thunder. Stole all the thunder, yeah. They they really don't have any any grounds to, to, to work on. And uh, I'm not about to just throw $10 at a, at a phone app now, you know, now that the hype has died down. I'm good. It's still a it's still a pretty good game, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm sure. I'm if sure. You're huge, if you're a huge Mario fan, you're on Android. Eh, give it a shot. I mean, you can you yeah, can download, you play the demo. Um, and then you get I think the first two levels, and then after that, it's ten dollars, and it's a one time cost. Nine ninety nine unlocks everything else. Okay. Yeah. So. No, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna pass on that. I don't know. We'll we'll see. But the hype has definitely died down on that game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Long so. long long ago. Yeah. Um, But yeah, let's go ahead and move into our next segment, which is going to be our long form discussion. But before we do that, we want to give another quick shout out to our sponsors, the new challenger discord for Street Fighter V. If you're looking to get good, if you're looking to test your strength, test your might, you know, (laughs) you're looking to be, yeah, you're looking to be challenged. Or if you're a masochist, you just want somebody to put them paws on you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the <laughs> the new challenger discord is the place for you go to www.newchallenger.gg for more information and shout outs to mr vinegar uh who is the owner of the new challenger discord uh, also mount lover is one of the uh coaches and moderators for the tournaments so uh if you go there let them know that true sonic sent you no, as a matter of fact, don't do that because you might get kicked out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't really been active in the community lately. Those, But those guys are super awesome, and I'm pretty sure if I jumped back in uh, 
with my with my uh, rusty kin, they'll be more than happy to uh, help me because they have coaches. Um, they have coaching sections. They have weekly and biweekly tournaments for beginners and uh, for gold ranked players. So um, definitely check those guys out. Uh, you can follow them on Twitter as well at SF New Challenger and follow them on Twitch to watch their tournaments at twitch.tv forward slash SF New Challenger. But with that said, we're going to go ahead and get into our long form discussion. And uh, this week, we wanted to talk about something. Um, I don't know. We wanted to talk about something really different. Most times we kind of um, like wrap around with uh, the long form and kind of just like focus on things that we've been currently talking about. But uh, since we already did a long form on cheating, I figured we would just kind of just go out of left field and talk about something uh, a little different. And uh, this week we're going to be talking about region specific censorship. Uh, that's kind of like a tongue twister for me. I can't say that properly. Region, I got to space it out. Specific censorship. There we go. So uh, <laughs> um, it's been a thing that's been in games for as long as games have been out there. I mean, you can say um, that they've been censoring games in uh, in a sense by changing the difficulty for you know Western and Eastern aud audiences. You can you can say right. that. That's a form of censorship, but um, when, yeah, definitely when it comes to um, you know, like sexuality, they they definitely change it well, up, they, yeah, for the Eastern and uh, Western uh, audiences. Um, let me ask a question: What are some of the earliest um forms of censorship in games uh, that you have noticed or learned about, like older games? What's some of the earliest? Well, the the most the the most um known one the, the the one that everybody has known about has been Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. Uh, remember, the original Mortal Kombat didn't have any blood. It, for the Sega Genesis, you had the blood code. Mm -hmm. And for the Super Nintendo, there was no blood at all. It was like it was like lots of sweat. It was sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was sweat. Steam. So that, that's, one, that's one of the big ones is, is the Mortal Kombat and, and the gore. And what's funny is... is I mean, it was... It was all over the news. People mm -hmm. talk. I mean, like it was on like mainstream news, and this is back in what the early nineties. Yeah, the ESRB um, was created because of uh, essentially, yeah, yeah, because essentially. of them. Yeah. Um, another one that I can think about is uh, Primal Rage. Remember Primal Rage? I remember Primal Rage. Remember the monkey piss? I remember the monkey <laughs> piss. <laughs> Yo, they had like farts and piss and all, and right. that game was fucking gross, dude. <laughs> that, that, that was another one that was censored. It, it caused a lot of trouble because of stuff like that. I mean, some of the games were pretty gross. Um, and I think initially, I mean, back in that time, games were thought as kids' toys. Yeah. You know, they they weren't they weren't looked at. They, they you know people didn't realize or think about adults actually playing them. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, when you get stuff like that in the game, there was like you said, there was no rating system. I mean, the game was just a game. And, you know, parents were buying these games that had no idea what they were buying. Much right. like it is today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mom, I want the Nintendo. Wrong answer, cuz. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, that, that was one of the more, that was one of the earlier censorship, cen game, censorship games I can mm. think about. Um, uh, another another thing is um, I've noticed, and this is still going on as it is, it's going on today, is Australia. Australia is... Um, is extremely heavy-handed when it comes to gaming and censorship. Yeah. Extremely heavy-handed. Yeah. Um, some of the earliest that I uh, recall, and this is only because I, I've been a huge fan of the franchise as a kid, um, Streets of Rage. You remember that game? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the Sega Genesis, uh, the female character, her name was Blaze. And in one of her animations, um, you know, she wears this, like, this, like, really, like, short, like, like red skirt or whatever uh -huh. and in one of her animations she kind of like does this axe kick now i never really looked into that as a kid you know it wasn't something that you know i was like focused on it i was focused on you know putting paws on people you know what i'm saying but um the japanese release of streets of rage is actually called by a different name called bare knuckle um like when you play that game it's 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 a little different um, it's it's a little different from the American release. Uh, for instance, with the animation that I was talking about with with uh, Blaze's uh, axe kick, she you, she could actually like get a, like a little peek of her freaking like underwear <laughs> when awesome. she does that. <laughs> and I thought that was weird, but I thought it was even weirder that they took it out of the American version. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a lot of like small subtleties 
with a game and how it was originally created in Japan and then how it was brought over, localized, and, you know, changed for an American audience. I mean, yeah, just... Americans are notoriously horrible when it comes to any kind of sexuality. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, even even going further with the Streets of Rage, um, you know, and I find I, I found out all of this, you know, you know, being a, a huge fan and, like, going back and playing the Japanese versions mm-hmm. of, uh, of, you know, classic games, you know, via emulation, of course. Right. But um, when you go back and play uh, Streets of Rage or Bare Knuckle 3, there's actually a character in that game that was completely omitted from the American release. His name was Ash, and... He he was like a flamboyantly gay boss character. <laughs> like he had like the I, I I'm not I don't want to offend anybody, but you know like he had like the purple and the pink and the booty shorts. Right. He was gay, just, just o- overly overly a typical gay person. Right, yeah. Right. But th- that character was completely omitted from the American release, and mm-hmm. I always wondered like. Why, 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 why do that? You know, like this is the game in, you know, how it was attended, you know, uh, how it was created, uh, you know, at release. And then, you know, a, a lot of these games don't come out in America for like months later or, or right. whatever, because they have to go through the localization mm-hmm. and they completely omitted that. And I, I always right. thought that that was super, super weird. It's, it's uh, again. It, that's one thing with America is inse- anything sexuality, especially homosexuality. They there's a huge problem with it. Always has been. Um, yeah. it's lightening up a little bit lately, but they're still. I mean, they're they're, they're still complaining about Mass Effect, the sex scenes in Mass Effect, Dude, and the fact yeah. that Mass Effect Andromeda is going to have some sex scenes in it. I mean, that that came up as an issue. It should never be an issue. That should never be an issue. I mean, they throw it in your face. American culture is sex is all over the place. In your videos, on your TV, even in freaking commercials. You, right. I mean, Viagra and 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 um, what's the other stupid dude? The one that Mike Dicker does. See Alex. <laughs> say Alex. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. How many Viagra and see Alex thing? We got some middle aged woman talking about his her husband that can't get it up. I mean, come on. But you yeah. put it in the video game and it's all oh, it's so taboo. It's got to take it. I mean, the 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 um. I think that you know America as a society is still like on this mind frame that games are for kids. So that that may be that, even that, even though there's a there's a rating for M for mature eighteen exactly. plus. I, you know? I would I would agree with that if you didn't have stuff like Call of Duty. And True. Battlefield and all those games being so popular and all the teenage kids and the young kids getting them and playing. I mean, if you get into a Call of Duty lobby, I guarantee you. Oh God, it's, it's four out of the sixteen toxic. players are going to be ten year olds cussing at you. <laughs> toxic, <laughs> right? So, I mean, that that's that's a. I mean, that reason is horror is is a joke. It's just that. American and I will say American policymakers because not Americans in general, but American policymakers are mm. just prudes and hypocrites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, there's been games that have just like not come out over here just because you know sexuality or whatever. Like right. uh, we talked about it a while ago. Is the, the that Dead or Alive like Beach Volleyball three or something like that? <laughs> just didn't come out. Didn't come out in America because yeah, because I mean that game was horrible. That was just I mean that, that, that that's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's people that who was like it. That was Come on. <laughs> it's rated M for mature, man. It's for adults. Exactly. And that, <coughs> I, I will liken it to uh, movies, right? Mm-hmm. If, if you have a movie that's rated R, Kids and we say it's, we're not going to let it come out because what? It, it has too much sexuality. And we let them come out and it's rated R for a reason. And it's the same reason games are rated. Yeah. So that's why you have the ETM, right? Yeah. So... I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's 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 with that, and um, you know where it's gonna go. I mean, from from what we've seen in recent years, you know, a lot of a lot of changes just happened in the localization process, mm-hmm. and um, there was oh man, I can't remember. I think it, it was some kind of um, I think it was like some kind of like DS game that came out and um you know a, a lot of it was changed some kind of like rpg a lot of it was changed um, you know i know well breath of fire has some little changes yeah but yeah i mean there's i mean all of the games the final fantasy some profanity profanity was taken out mm-hmm. um you got the hot, hot coffee mine and grand theft auto we all remember that well yeah yeah um even like stuff like uh punch out 
remember Punch Out? Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Oh yeah, with the remember? with the names. Yeah, Soda oh. Popipski. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> Soda Popipski. He, he was uh, he was originally Vodka Drunkinski or whatever. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it, there's tons of stuff. Uh, Mortal, we said Mortal Kombat. Uh, Fire uh, Emblem. Yeah, the one of the more recent Fire Emblems games was completely altered. Um, you know, in its Western release. I mean, when when I look at so so is it a good thing or a bad thing let's let's go let's go there is it a good thing that you know these games are being you know altered from their you know original no, it's a bad thing yeah i agree it, it's it's a bad thing because i mean it's it's censoring art right it, it is an art form you can say what you want to say you can say it's for kids you can say whatever you want to say the truth of the matter is uh game video games that it's it is an art form and it's it's a way for people that to convey a message, their message. Mm -hmm. um, it, it could be the worst message in the world, but it's a way for them that they're conveying their message. And considering we are the country of freedom of speech, to go out, go ahead and censor these games the way they are being censored is it, it's contradictory to to that that um, that belief or, or, or that constitutional right, right. In, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't agree with any. Uh, Any time that you know a, a game comes out that I want to to purchase for myself and play. I want to play it in its in its purest form. I want to play exactly. it the way the developers and you know the development team intended it for it to be uh, for it to be played for for the story to be consumed. That's that's what I'm all about. So you know when it's when it's altered, you know in the localization process, and you find out that oh well this is different, um, this is different, and you know sometimes it's it's not it's not in a in a in a bad way. Sometimes right. games are altered just so that you know it makes more sense, especially right. when you're uh, you're playing more games uh, that were tailored to the Japanese audience. Like uh, for for instance, Yakuza, um, there was probably at, at least with the early ones that had the English voice actors, there was probably a lot that was changed in those games just so that it would make sense to a, an American because a, a lot that goes on in Japan doesn't necessarily won't necessarily translate you know one for one with a to, with right. an American audience. So I can see where you're you're making these changes to um appeal more to American audiences, but when you're trying to just block out uh, a certain, you know, section a feature. certain section, a certain feature or a certain um and even know, when you start changing names, especially in in today's games where a lot of the games, especially if you play any of like a, adventure role playing type games, mm -hmm. Um, the character development is is immense, right? And when you start changing names, you start changing scenes and stuff like that. It loses, it loses. Uh, the story loses a part of itself. It, the the story has essentially changed a bit because uh, maybe you're not conveying a, a particular emotion you want. Um, your the game the game of the feel about this character, right? Right, right. Um, and when when you start making those changes, it, it can deeply impact the way the game is. Um, they deep, deeply impact the way the game is is it's perceived. Um, yeah. It's perceived exactly. Yeah, and and with you know the age of the internet, when these games when they come out in Japan, because you know most times you know Japanese games come out first in Japan and then later over here, um, you know these people they already know what they're going to be getting into. Right. You know you have people that will will watch a playthrough of a game and then like just like translate the entire game. So mm -hmm. that it can be like you know viewed for for multiple audiences, um, especially with the new feature on on YouTube where you can just have people go in and input their own you know one for one um, close cap uh, captioning captions. Got yeah, it. you can have people just go in and caption your games, uh, caption like anything um, in in YouTube now. So a lot of these people's you, you know they'll they'll look at the game and you know will still want to play it in, in that form, but only, you know, with English text and English voice actors. Right. And then when they get something different or when a story comes out that says like, oh, Nintendo or whoever, they're changing this to, you know, because of, you know, culture differences, you know, it's 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 weird. It, it takes away from, from the art form. Right. And, I mean, and, and, and my, in my opinion, it diminishes like the... the I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm trying to use, but it lowers the quality of the game, the version that you're getting, pretty much. Right. Yeah. It. it yeah. It diminishes the game in general. Yeah. 
just, yeah. just like you're saying, it just diminishes the game. And um, like, like I said, I, I think the biggest problem is not necessarily is, is not the culture. It's, it's not the society. It's not the people. I should mm-hmm. say the people don't really care because the people that don't play the games, they don't care. No. And like you said, the people that play the games, they know what they're getting into. The problem is the policymakers, and the policymakers don't understand. They don't care to understand. They just think they know. Right. And and, and until we get people in in office. And making the policies and making these approvals to understand that it's it's an act, it's an art form, and the people that are going to want to see it in its full, and the people that are buying it are knowing what they get into. Um, a, a, a secondary to that is is also parents. Parents need to be educated on what they're buying their children. They need yeah. to understand what the ratings are and what they are for. I mean, I, I used to work at Best Buy quite a while ago. And um, while I was working at Best Buy, they had the ratings. And I would have people come in and try to buy, you know, 12-year-old little Jimmy a mature game. And I'm like, I will always, I will always I'll, I'll, and say, hey, Turn look, to this... the back of the box. I'm like, okay, because mm-hmm. I worked at GameStop. So, I, you know, right. I went through the same thing. I look on the back of the box. I'm saying, okay, just so you know, this game includes sex and violence, blood right. and gore, gambling, alcoholic beverage, you know, right. references or whatever. Is that something that like it, you know it, it wasn't required of me? Right. It wasn't I would required. Always, all I would always I would tell I was to tell, ask the customer. I say, hey, look, do you mind your child watching R-rated movies? Mm-hmm. And and if they said no, I said, well, this is essentially an R-rated game. Yeah. I'm like, if you want something that's PG PG thirteen, you look for T. If you see an M, it's R rated. And I mean, they, you know, they would thank me and they would go either not buy anything or pick something else up. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's just that they have to, they have to be um, educated. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And, and then that's what I kind of like took that upon myself by just because when you look on the back of a game case, it gives you a description of what, like, why it's, um, it's rated that way. And so, you right. know, if it has like, you know, mature, suggestive themes or whatever, I'm like, yeah. It, Got got some boobies in here. You want your son seeing that? I wouldn't exactly. actually say that to a customer, but you know, that that's a a, a lot of <coughs> excuse me. Um, what the problem is, um, and you know why I don't understand why people get so upset is because you know the information is there. It's, it's you just like gotta in your face. You, just, you just gotta you just gotta read. You just gotta be aware of what's going on. I don't know. I I don't know why any ten year old would be playing freaking Call of Duty, man. Especially in that, I don't remember which one it was. It might have been like Black no Ops Russia. Three or something like that, where you just like went inside the the airport and just like sprayed yeah. everybody. Modern Warfare Two. Man, that that made me uneasy, and I was like, the No Rush. They censored us. Remember, they had to go in and actually. Um, they put they the disclaimer. The yeah. They put a disclaimer, and then they act because before you couldn't skip it. They allowed you to go ahead and skip it. Mm, I yeah. think I think at the. I think either at the beginning of the story or like before the scene started, they gave you the option option to skip it. Yep. Yeah. So you didn't actually have to play it. Where you it was went either in, you watched it or you just like didn't see it at all. It was right. Something so like that. You, you can skip it. There were there were like three options. There's one option. I, the, the one you can skip it entirely came later. Okay. There, but you always were able to participate or not participate. Right. So if you didn't participate, you could just actually walk and follow and never shoot your gun, or you can just you know full out. Completely play the whole the whole, the whole thing. scene. Yeah. And but yeah, that, that made me uneasy. Not me. I killed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a monster. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Um, I I don't know how I felt it, but I I felt, you know, as I I actually just walked around, followed them, and just watched, because I it, it was a bit uneasy if you think about it. Yeah. What what was happening? I mean that that was a very powerful scene in, in the game. I, I, w- I would say for sure. But, um, again, you are warned. Mm-hmm. And you have the option to you had the option to skip it at some point, and and you had the option to participate or not. And, and again, it's not something that a child should be because you know kids, they they have an issue with remorse at such a young age. Yeah. Consequences and remorse there's not is really not there for them. Um, so it, it, I, I don't know. Again, parents, when you're buying these games for your kids, none of them you you have to know what you're buying. Yeah. Always have to know what you're buying. Yeah. And whenever I have kids, they go they're gonna be playing this guy right here, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's early. Play some big Planet. Yeah, Little Big Planet got into trouble. Didn't they get into trouble with one of the songs they had? Oh, I don't know. 
Yeah, they had a they had to replace a song because it had some kind of um, lyrics that were pretty bad. I can try to remember. I don't remember that. The original Little Big Planet. They changed the song because one of the lyrics referenced something that was pretty not cool. So they changed it to <laughs> instrumental. Okay, I remember. Uh, I can't think of it exactly, but yeah, I mean, little stuff like that. I mean, that was actually more of a developer oversight. It seemed yeah. like the developer because it was a um, foreign song. And in the foreign language, the original song had something, some bad lyrics in it. They had to change it from the, the one with lyrics into, into the one that was just instrumental. I mean, yeah. something like that is not necessary. I, I don't mind something like that, I guess. It's not huge. But again, like you said, when, when it gets into uh, affecting the gameplay or, or the story, it, it's problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll... Um... We'll just have to see see what happens. You know, it's it's always problematic when they change it. You know, just to you know preemptively you know prevent you know people from you know feeling a certain way about stuff. But I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. It it, it also takes you know learning and you know going out and seeking knowledge and you know educating yourself on things right. to you know avoid that kind of stuff if that's not what you want to see. You know, right? And like, like I said, the people people have to realize that. It's not just kids that play games anymore. If, if, if it were just kids that were playing games, the gaming industry wouldn't be the billion-dollar industry that it is. Yeah, we wouldn't be building a freaking stadium <laughs> that's going to be uh, wired for uh, esports. esports. Right. If it was just the capital of the country, if it wasn't, you know, if it was just a kid's toy. Exactly, exactly. I mean, this this is, is way past. It hasn't been, I, I would say, game video games haven't been a kid's toy in, oh, about 20 years. I think the last time you could probably call it a toy was maybe with the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo, yeah, yeah. Super Nintendo, because even even the original PlayStation and N sixty four had you know its fair share of horror games. Right. Yeah. Once once it got to the PlayStation, the PlayStation Nintendo sixty four era, I, I think gaming as a kid's toy was was a done deal. Yeah, I agree. But um, yeah, that was our long form discussion. Please let us know. What you thought about it? You know, are you uh, okay with you know being games being censored? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Let us know in the uh, comments, and um, you know, give us your feedback. You can also submit long form discussion uh, topics for us via our social media. So, um, you know, let us uh, let us know what you guys think, and um, yeah, put your put your thoughts out there. We would definitely love to hear it. Love to hear from you. Absolutely. Love to hear it. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the next and our final uh, segment here, and which is going to be our final thoughts. Um, the final thoughts is where we basically revisit every uh, or all the stories that we've had, and um, you know, give our final two cents uh, before uh, signing off here. So, Boogie, I'm gonna let you go ahead and go first. Um, let's see, I, I don't know. I'm I'm still I'm still on the fence about Street Fighter Five. I might join you guys on that Discord. Dude, I have to. I, I hey. If there's any, you know what, I'm gonna save it for for the closing when I'm talking about. It, but go ahead. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I might I might have to join you guys on that Discord. I'm I'm just trying to figure out if I'm gonna go PC or PS4. I, I'll I'll decide. Um, Sonic Sonic Mania. I mean, not Sonic Mania. Sonic Forces. I'm I'm actually really excited about now. Um, after seeing that first gameplay trailer, is is really piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. I want to see more, but it's is moving very close to a must buy for me. Um. I'm definitely going to be keeping up with this uh, arena, the Washington Mystics arena that's being built in DC. Yeah, um, I'm going to find out more information. Maybe uh, next month, up uh, next month, next next week, I have an update with uh, more solid dates on when it when the stadium is expected to open. Cool. Um, but definitely, as soon as they start having events there, I'm, uh, I will definitely visit. Um, for honor. You know, the AFK farming is a problem, but that's not the biggest problem with that game right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, PS Now is still, I, I don't have any, there's no value to that with me. Yeah. Um, as for me, um, Street Fighter, man, they just, they keep messing with my boy. So I, I don't know, man. <laughs> with, with them Ken buffs, dude. I, I'm going to need some, I'm going to need some Ken buffs before, <laughs> before I get back on there. Um, I'm wearing the t-shirt. So you know I'm hyped. I'm, I'm, dude, it is so hard to contain my excitement for this game dude I'm, I'm like what you're seeing right now is is a facade this this is an act i'm actually <laughs> jumping for joy right now because sonic mania uh and uh you know sonic uh project 2017 or sonic forces uh is coming out this year i can't i cannot wait 
and uh, I am I'm not sad in the slightest for them delaying it until the summer because <laughs> for one it gives me a chance to finish my freaking uh, marathon series my countdown it gives me a chance to finish so yeah. that's that's actually a it good is, thing this is a good year for gaming good year for gaming that. yeah um ps ps now get get the hell out of here <laughs> and um yeah i agree with you 100 percent on for honor that um you know and you know just just by what we said with the numbers it doesn't seem like too huge of an issue but i'm glad that they're preemptively um they're taking care taking right. taking you know the proper measures to to nip it in the bud before it gets uh too too much uh wind underneath it yeah. um rest in peace soon to be to the ps3 and i'm i'm gonna pass i'm probably gonna pass on uh mario run I'm hey you know what pass on it i don't know if you're in the market for a new android phone mm -hmm. um sprint and verizon have this crazy deal what? If you the LG just released their G6, if you pre-order an LG G6 from Sprint or Verizon, mm -hmm. you get a free Google Home, which is the the assistant, and a free HD TV. What the fuck? <laughs> exactly. How so, much is um, that? Hey, I'm about to pre-order that shit just because. I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I didn't check into it. I'm. I mean, I'm in the iOS. Um, yeah, I, and I just got the voice. iPhone Seven. Yeah, I, that I just sounds got crazy. It. But yeah, it's like a, I think one of them is given like a 45 inch and the other one is given a 49 inch HD TV with the purchase of the LG G6 and, and as well as a Google Home um, um, device. Can I use my upgrade? <laughs> That's what I, I, I wanted believe, to. I believe so. You can I'm use about to call my you carrier your, tonight. <laughs> you can use your upgrade and you can um, you can you can pay pay for it outright or you can do like the payment. The yeah, the payment, payment plan. plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think AT and T and T Mobile are only giving out to Google Home. It's Sprint and Verizon that's giving out the TV as well. LG trying to get back in the game, baby. The egg yeah. giving giving you a free TV is is not uh not a bad way to go about it. <laughs> so, so I'm interested. <laughs> those of you out there that were looking to get Mario Run and and uh, you need a new Android phone so you can play it in all of its great glory, there's a, there's some deals to be had. That's that's freaking dope, that's dope. But <laughs> that that's my non sequitur. But yeah. I, I was really and, that was, uh, that's I, crazy. I found that pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely, like, definitely interesting. But uh, yeah, that was our final thoughts, our final two cents. We're gonna give one last shout out to our sponsor, the Street Fighter New Challenger Discord. I also want to give a shout out to the winner of the tournament that just um just ended right before we went live. Uh, Chili501 and his Ryu um, won the tournament, so congratulations to him. And the on the EU side, um, Mimusun, Meme Mimusun, I can't fucking say that, but congratulations to him for winning um, the Season 2 Tournament 5 EU Underdog Bronze and Silver Tournament. Those were our uh, two winners from this week. Congratulations to those guys. Uh, in addition to that, if you want to learn more about the Street Fighter New Challenger Discord, head on over to www.newchallenger.gg. Um, let them know that True Sonic sent you. And um, big shouts out to the creator and owner of the Discord, Mr. Vinegar. And uh, a big shout out to Mount Lover, um, who is a commentator and one of the coaches for um, coming on to the podcast this week. You know, the Mount Lover is the homie. So, so thanks, thanks to Mount Lover for, yeah, for thank you for all the Street us, Fighter knowledge. All all that Street Fighter knowledge. That was a lot of fucking knowledge too. <laughs> when I when I asked him because it was kind of like last minute, I asked him like, "Hey, can you uh, come on the podcast for a segment? Because you know of the Street Fighter update, we want to talk about it. I feel like like you would be you know well suited to do that." He was like, "I read that fucking shit like a book. Let's go." I was like, "All right, we in there. <laughs> we in there." <laughs> Can always count on Mount Lover for uh, being well versed in Street Fighter knowledge. So, so definitely a, a big thanks to him and um, you know to our sponsor. Um, the upcoming schedule for the um, tournaments will be posted in our show notes and in the description. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube or, or whatnot, um, so definitely check those out. You know, you can watch them on uh, Twitch.tv, and uh, you know they're, they're pretty hype. They're, they're pretty hype, you know, so even if you just want to want to watch, definitely uh, check that out as well. But with that all uh, being said, 
uh, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, bounce up out of here. Uh, is there anything else that you had to add, Boogie? Nope. That, that's, I'm going to call it a night. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and call it a night. Uh, you can reach us on our social media. We are at AWGamingNS uh, at, on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Facebook. We are uh, a weekly gaming news show. You can just you know, put it in the search bar or put out uh, AWGNS and it'll uh, take you right to us. You take us take you right to us. Uh, you can also visit our YouTube page where Boogie has uh, uploaded uh, the very first 10 for 10 episode, which you can check out. Um, those are going to be a uh, weekly reoccurring uh, video series that you can only watch on YouTube. Yep, it's, it's pre-recorded. It's mm-hmm. not live. And and basically what it is is 10 headlines in the gaming news for the past week. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely go go check it out and you know show Bucky some love. You know, it's his it's his first video um in this format, so definitely show him some love. You know, it's going to it's going to be changing, you know, and evolving as time goes on. So uh let him let him know what you think. Uh, yeah. I I enjoyed it. It was it's pretty cool. Yeah. It was hey, cool. sh- short of time, you can't listen to our, our hour and a half, two hour show, mm-hmm. but you still want to keep up with the news, yeah, go ahead and listen to it. And, and <clears throat> many of the stories that I talked about there, um, I talked about, we talked about them today. Yeah, yeah, pretty um, much. In a yeah. longer form. So, yeah. so um, that is our teeny URL that you're looking at at the bottom of the screen. It's teenyurl.com forward slash AW Gaming NS. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, hit us up on uh, YouTube as well and uh, speaking of listening uh boogie why don't you let them know exactly where they can listen to us right and all our shows are in podcast format so you can get ahead and get out audio only if you want to listen to listen to us on your way to work on your way to school or wherever else you got to go um we're on itunes um, we're in the google play store we're on tune in radio and we are in the general podcasting directory so any podcast and most podcasting apps you use um we'll just couple, name a few we got overcast or, or cast for xbox one if you if you want to listen to us in the background mm-hmm. um you search us awgns or a weekly game and news show the podcasts go up the day after um around noon um and Download us, listen, um, go to iTunes, go to Google Play, give us, leave us some feedback, rate us, leave us some comments. Um, let us know what you think, uh, what you would like to hear, what you don't like hearing. Right. Definitely. We will always take your uh, comments and thoughts into consideration. Um, but yeah, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, bounce up out of here. As always, we are your hosts. My name is Trinell. I'm Todd. Happy Todd. I, I, a little bit, little yeah, bit. yeah. We're, we're mellow, <laughs> mellow time, mellow time today. Yeah, just little, yeah. I'm, I'm moving on up. Right? We're moving on up. All right, and now uh, right. we will see you guys next week. Next week, peace out.